I'm not actually, I'm trying to do just like an affect on the voice. It's not actually an accent, so shut up, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, say, you hear what I you said thinking? nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking it pretty loudly. So. Rising from the sea is a familiar creature. You see the amphibious looking form of a merid. Uh -oh. The same djinn that you had faced in the fountain, and he, as he rises, he says, oh, I found you! And he, his eyes bear down on all of you, and he readies for battle, and summons two water elementals to fight as well. And usually, birds are large-sized creatures, but this one is huge as it, it seems to be empowered by the waters below swirling around him. And let's have everyone roll initiative. Um, I don't think I gave out Vigilant Blessing. Don't give uh, it to me. <laughs> don't give it to you or give it to you? I have it already by myself. Okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'll always take things, but if you're a little far away, you can always touch yourself. I was gonna say, I think I'm far enough away that I'd probably just use it on myself for this round. Thank you, Meg, for enjoying my joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Roll initiative, and did anyone get above a 20? 22. Oh, oh hang on. No. No. I got an unnatural 20. All right. All right, so 15 through 19. Uh, 18 for Vrexel. Anyone else? I did poorly. I only Come got a 14. On. Come on, misadvantage. <laughs> I rolled a 3 <laughs> and an 11. Garbage. Misadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what did Moxie get? <clears throat> Eleven. Okay. Okay. And then, Brainer, remind me what you got. Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. Oh, I need to rearrange myself. Oh my goodness, I'm, everything is terrible. Okay. <laughs> everything is terrible. Well, I'm about to make it worse. There we go. Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at the beginning of combat, we have Umbrin. Oh, I wasn't prepared to see a familiar face again, especially one that does not look so happy to see us. You ran away, and I shall have my revenge. The coin wasn't that important to you. You know, let bygones speak bygones. You're in a new lair. The whole ocean is your element. I uh, shall you don't have to feed die you here to with us. my fishes. Yeah. Or maybe you'll feed them yourself. <laughs> Who knows? Um, I want to try out my new spell, Chaos Bolt. Hey. Uh, yeah, let's see what it does. Because I could thunderstep out there. That'd be a bad <laughs> idea. Uh, let's see how you do thunder Chaos Bolt. Okay. And I'm, gonna I'm just going to throw it at a first level just to see how it just to see how it goes. Uh, I'm also going to move a bit away from my friends so we're not so bunched up in chase. We oh, we know this guy's got area of effect attacks. Yes, you're familiar. Yeah. We are uh, familiar. With, you're familiar with his water jets, specifically. I've got a 16 plus... Yeah. Yeah, Are you tar hit. targeting I, yeah. the Merid? I'm targeting him for right. a 23. Definitely hits. And I roll 2d8 plus a six. I've got uh, an equal 10 damage, and then I pick a type that goes with it. You know, why don't we stay in our element? A seven is psychic. I'm going to throw the psychic damage at him. So hey. you take 10 points of psychic damage. All right, so the Chaos Bolt lurches from your hands, swirls around, and then uh, hits him in his side, and how much damage was that again? 10. 10 psychic. 
10 psychic and uh, it, the chaos bolt wraps around him until it reaches his mind and he seems to wince in pain. Oh, Once man. you are done, yeah. it is Kanari next. Okay. Um, I have several questions. Um, is the Merid in the water? Yes. Okay. Uh, the so water he... seems to be swirling up around him, so he might be like a bit... He's about 10 feet from the surface of the water, but the water keeps swelling around him, so the the distance changes, but it seems to come up as like a little whirlpool swirling around him. That water elementals are like this as well. Okay. I'm gonna... Uh, I'm gonna save that then. Um, I think uh, I'll just go ahead and do the combo of uh, Channel Divinity for Twilight Sanctuary as an action. Um, just to start getting us some temporary hit points, just because this thing is much bigger than it used to be. And then a uh, bonus action for... Uh, um, I'll go ahead and do Steps of Night, just to get a flying speed and because me and the deck surface are not uh, friends right now. So mm -hmm. I use, I think, half of my movement to stand up. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'll go, what's my movement? 15, uh, I'll go 15 feet up in the air. 15 uh, feet up in the air. And I'll say, like, I use, um, I'm going to hold on to part of the rigging just to, like, try and stabilize myself and make sure I'm still traveling with the ship so I'm not just, like, hovering in the air oh. far away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. So, right. uh, so this yeah. bubble of night and twilight seems to swirl around you, and as you lift up, there is a little bit of, like, a curve underneath you uh, since... Uh, but it does stretch out 30 feet, and so if anyone were to stand below you within the sphere, they would also still get the benefit, so there's that. Yeah, um, I just want to double check where I am and how far 30 feet is out of here. How high up did you go again? Uh, I'd go... Could I say, like, I went essentially, like, 15 feet, like, on a diagonal. Yeah. Yeah, so I I don't know what that is. Pythagorean theorem. Uh, let's um, say that is 15 feet. Okay. Uh, I'll come forward just a couple of spaces then. If you think about it, since you can move diagonally on a 2D map, you can move diagonally on a 3D map. And okay. still, yeah. Okay, so I'll say I'm about here then. So that should get Bam. Everybody except Umbrin in the party. All right. I forgot I was supposed to stop insulting things, so they stopped trying to hit me. <laughs> <laughs> so when you are done, you will pass the turn to Vrexel. Yep, all set. Uh, I'm going to roll temp HP for myself. Perfect. Uh, oh, God, I got full. Um, and that went up because we're level seven now. So I have 13 temporary hit points. Nice. Lucky number. <laughs> In some cultures, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so for Brexel's turn, um, how how tall are these like stairs over here? Like is, uh, is that is, is that usable cover? Yeah, yeah. So if you get to here it'd be probably half cover because the stairs head up ten feet. Okay. Brexel's gonna go. Well, let's say 15 feet. Well, it, like, it's somewhere between 10 and 15 feet. <laughs> sure, sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, you are also at two and a half foot now. So. Yeah. Um, so that'll give you three quarters cover. Cool. So, yeah, Brexel's gonna go kind of just there. Peeking out um, is going to hold Fairy Fire to see if there is, for any instance where the elementals or any of these people get close enough that he thinks he could hit two of them in one go. Because um, right now they're, they're a little too spread out, but he's just going to be holding that that fairy fire to try and um, uh, 
try and see if he'll be able to get more than one at some point. All right, holding that spell, so make sure to mark it off. Yep. But then it is a brainless turn once you are done. Yep, that's oh, it. Oh, which which form are you in? Are you in pow pow or boom boom? Uh, I am in the um, lightning launcher. The okay. uh, uh, yeah, that form. Good to know. More stuff. Range will be helpful. Yeah. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, once you're done, pass it on to Brina. Okay. One, I'm raging. One, two, three, four, five. I would like to. Can I stand here and attack, or is that... If, I, if that's not a normal, a good one, I would like to say that I would like to use athletics to kind of hang off the rope and swing out and swing at this guy. My two attacks, and then come back to the boat. Yeah, so there's not quite rope, but the railing does have some, like, little places that you can grab. So go ahead and give me that athletics check. Uh, a dirty the, 20. The stairs, plus the stairs, like, the, the railing goes up with it, so it gives you, like, a little bit of a... Yeah, but yeah, you're 20. able to hold on just fine. Uh, however, is there... You can still take an extra attacks even though one of your hand is. My like my weapon is my attack. weapon is my weapon is one handed, so I use one hand yeah. anyways. For okay, um, yeah, yeah. extra attack, it's still the same one hand. Okay, just wanted to double check on that. Yeah, um, yeah. So I run up, and uh, yeah, I make my two attacks probably say something not terribly witty but my brain is broken today i've been staring at excel spreadsheets all day uh, this is the blood hammer right no this is this is my war hammer that i've infused with the blood mall stuff plus the branding yeah, yeah. also i need to gotta give it a new name nope no <laughs> <laughs> <That's for you. laughs> so was like the iron beard's name their weapon Jeff? what are we Elves. No, they're named. It's she's not. It's not getting a new one. She Elves. made it. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's its name? I don't know. <laughs> Told you, my brain is broken right now. That's fine. That's fine. I'll think is about Brina it over the week. Off the ship now. Uh, no, Brina I'm hanging. hanging I'm hanging off of the and doing yeah. like okay. a piratey, like whack whack, and then coming back on the ship. I love it. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. The food was ready. What did you sorry. roll? Um, sorry, I was just reminding myself how brand branding smite works, because that's on my weapon too, but I'm not using that right this second. It's been a week since we've been ourselves, guys. You'll have to give us time to catch up on our ability. Uh, so, <laughs> obviously reckless, because I'm swinging from a rope and whacking. Like, it would not be reckless. Oh, God, okay. garbage rolls, though. Uh, 17 on the first to first for the first hit. 17 to hit. That hits. Not bad on the damage. 5, 12, 14 damage on the first hit. Comes back around for the second second hit. With a uh, 22 to hit. Yeah. Ooh, that's less. Uh, for 12 damage as I nimbly land back on the ship. And that's my turn. All right. You nimbly hop back onto the ship. Do you want to move yourself there? Oh, you're staying within five feet. Never mind. Yeah, right? just, just like, like. So my my thought is like, she ran up, grabbed something, swung out, and then, you know, because it's out a little bit, you mm -hmm. know, and then it's landing right there. That is totally cool. All right, up next is the Merid. So he is going to take his turn, and. Gotta move this. And he is going to move. Ooh, not grow in size, he's just gonna move. Five, ten. He gets bigger! 15, 20, mm -hmm. 30. What is your speed? What up, up, up? Uh, as soon as he gets close to the other elemental, mm -hmm. use my reaction to try and do the fairy fire and hit both of them. You pop out. And dexterity saving throws. So. Um, Merid will. Seven, 17 is that DC. 
Merit fails, so the glittery, powdery energy starts to wrap around the Merit like a veil. And then the water elemental also fails, so they are both nice. fairy fired. I think this is the first time that both of your targets have failed. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, three. All right, he moves there and doesn't do anything. Don't like that. And then the water elemental number one is going to run up on the ship. Five. Five. Ten. Fifteen. Twenty. Twenty-five. Right onto Umbrin. And Umbrin, it is just going to whelm you. So then it enters your space. And oh I no, need... I can't breathe. <laughs> I need you to make a DC 15 strength saving throw. The fun robot joke. <laughs> strength saves, I'm great at those. Five minus one. That will be a four. So four. you are grappled and take 15 bludgeoning damage as the water just slams against your sides and you become wrapped up in this water elemental's body, partially lifted off of the ground. Whelmed. And so, how far did it move to get there? That was like 30 feet, right? It is going to take you. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> and oh, no. complete more of it, or finish out its action by moving uh -oh. five feet in that direction. <laughs> Taking you into the water. Oh no! <laughs> I mentioned I can't twist. No. Boxy, <laughs> it's your turn. Oh no. Okay. Okay. Um. Well. Uh. There go all of my plans. Um. <laughs> That's the great thing about D and D when you're last, you're like, I've got so many plans and things happening. You're like, never mind. <laughs> I just, yeah, I had like the, the chillest plan and then, okay, anyway. Um, is like trying to pull Umbrin out and gonna be an action? Yes. Okay. Don't worry about me. I can teleport now. When you are within five oh. feet mm -hmm. of the elemental, a creature can attempt to pull you out and that was metagaming, so your character did not hear that. That's true. I wouldn't know that. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, when you look at Umbra and he's going like, no, leave it. It's fine. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Mox is like, what? You do to see run that. that. Yeah, she wants to run run that way, but is like, uh, okay, I guess. Um, So if that's the case, let me measure this really quick again. I've been doing a lot of measuring. Okay, that should be fine. Um, I'm going to move up one space for just a second. Um, and then, where did it go? Oh, gosh. There's too many things now. Uh, so myself, Kanari, and Brena all get, uh, Embolden Bond. Uh, Ooh. so for the next 10 minutes, uh, you, as long as we're within 30 feet of one another, you can add a d4, you can roll a d4 and add it to your attack roll, an ability check, or a saving throw that you make. So stay by you. Nice. Yeah, yeah. You see that Moxie's back tattoo of the symbol of Eldath lights up as she is using this feature. And you all feel this energy enter you. Now that, and you feel the connection between each of you as your bonds seem to strengthen each of your own power and capabilities. And it's all warm and tingly. Mm -hmm. Almost like you have to go to the bathroom. Uh. But oh, like, like when you get a cat and they're all like, it's gonna feel like you're gonna pee yourself, but I promise you're not. And you're like, that's not gonna happen. And then you're just laying there and you're like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, for or like anyone who's had a cat. <laughs> or when you sit on a car seat that has like the heater and the, like, yeah. We got wow, you down. So one, one, one for three of like references that just... Maxie, when you are done, let me know. Um I, no, I am going to um do the tattoo just to be safe as well. 
Bonus action, activate your tattoo, and it yeah. starts to glow the radiant glow. The same one, same color as your tattoo, so you're just glowing all over. Just, just these uh, lines across your body. I'm I'm my own rave. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then I am going to... I kind of assume Canari will be moving this way, so I'm, I'm gonna... I think I measured it out. I've Here's only moved trip. five feet. Yeah, so if I wanted to run to like, oh shoot, that's not what I wanted, to like here, can I just like jump over everything and go like straight diagonal? Uh, or do we need where to count do you it out? Want to, where do you want to hop up? Uh, <laughs> can I just hop up over Brexel? Uh, oh no, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I'm going to say that if you use Brexel as like a little like jump point, uh -huh. then you can just use your normal movement. Okay, cool. So. But you have to jump on Brexel. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, <laughs> like on his armor, right? Not on his actual like. I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, roll me an acrobatics check. Just uh, for the... See if you kick this gnome in the head of Diego. <laughs> Alright, I think I'll be okay. Uh, the DC is 30. <laughs> <laughs> because it's sunny. Uh, yes. I think it's 22. It's 15 plus 7. Math so your hard. foot catches the side what? of his armor no! and not his face. <laughs> okay. And you leap over Vrexel. No. Uh, your knee sort of grazing the tops of his little mm. wild hairs. <laughs> and you hop up onto the stairs. Okay, well, I can't move myself now for some reason, so. What? It's fine. Canary's oh, thing's in yeah, the way. It's because the, the sanctuary was still up. Oh, got it. Okay, well, there we go. I'm there now. <laughs> well, there we go. I'm there. <laughs> All right. It's been a long day. At the start of Water Elemental 2's turn. It is going to disengage. Rude. I don't like that. And the Married, is, or Married is going to use its held action. As it, uh, as the Elemental moves out of the way, the Married gathers water from above and it begins to swirl and then he shoots it forward in a watery jet and everyone except Umbrin and Moxie oh because it's a five foot it's five feet wide and I don't think he can clip the two of you or you along with everyone else so he is going to clip yeah, no, he can't do that. You two are not close enough. So he will get Braina, Vrexel, and Kanari. So each of you need to make a DC 16 dexterity saving throw. You, you do have, have the emboldening bond. You said I have three quarters cover right now? Or is it yep, half? Which does give you, it's three quarters in your current position, which does give you a little bit of a boost to your dexterity saving throw. Oh, awesome. I'm good. You're doing a dex save? Okay. Uh, that's a total of 23. <laughs> and Same. it's an effect you can see. <laughs> 23 for me as well. Oh, oh Dex is actually not great. Natural 20 plus uh, 2 for 22. <laughs> 22. Everyone succeeds. So you do not get thrown backwards by this jet of water, but you will stay, still take half the damage. So here's 3d6, 13 plus 10. So 23 halved to 11. Bludgeoning, Bludgeoning or what? damage. So halved to five yes. for me. And as it assails you, you plant your feet, you hold on to something, and you are able to resist the force of the water. I'm just like, Rah! at you. And now, the 
It's gonna go to the top of the order, and it's Umbrin's turn. Umbrin's turn. <laughs> no, that would hit my feet. I don't want to get. Okay. Uh, I'm going to bonus action use my boots of the winding path to go back 15 feet to where I was previously. Hey! <laughs> oh, yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nice. Don't worry about it. Um, and then. The elemental will turn. The elemental. Confused. So mad. Yeah, guess who can teleport now? It's me! After not being able to teleport. Um, and think, I think we're gonna do everybody's favorite, um, move, uh, Twin Spell Tasha's Mind Whip. At what's the, the range elemental... on that again? What's that? What's the range on that again? 60 feet. Alright. Oh, uh, you're actually able to hit any targets. Yeah, I'm gonna hit the, the Marriott and the Elemental that was just all up inside my joints. All right. I'm a very soggy now. It's not <laughs> that. Uh, I always forget. What's the saving throw? Wisdom. It is an intelligence saving. Intelligence. Throw. Yeah, it's one of those. Of sixteen, those. I'm gonna pop this at a level three. Ooh. All right. My Marriott new level three spell. Has a plus four to intelligence and rolls a six, so he will fail, and can only take one thing on his turn. Elemental one, uh, not intelligent. Minus three. <laughs> Uh, so it's a 13, so they both fail. They're going to take 4d6 psychic damage. It's going to be a 6, a 4, a 2, and a 4. Four. 16. 16 points. Yeah, that was easy math. Uh, 16 points of psychic damage on the both of them, and they're wrapped up in my uh, mind whip puppet string. All right, so the strings wrap around them and seem to cut off their abilities. They're they're twisting around. What are you doing to me? And then I'm going to just uh, get a few feet back just so I'm not in a straight line with anyone. Right there. All right. All right once you are done, it's Kamari's turn. Uh, why not? Um, I'm gonna move what, 5, 10, 15, 20. Um, Umbrin would have gotten temporary hit points. Uh, you also get 13 temporary hit points. Thank you so much. I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna use a fourth level spell. My only fourth Ooh. level spell. I'm gonna cast Control Water. Oh, hey, hey, yes. So, okay, there is so much going on with this. So you said the merit's like, um, like ten, kind of hovering ten feet in the water or whatever, as is yeah. the elemental. There's like okay. he's he's pulling a Korra. So I think what I want to try and do first is I want to use flood, which if we're in a, um. If you choose an area in a large body of water, you can instead create a 20-foot tall wave that travels from one side of the area to the other and then crashes down. Um, any huge or smaller uh, vehicles, which I don't think they're not vehicles, but um, I'm trying to basically knock them prone into the water and discombobulate them and get them away from the ship. So I want to, like, almost create like a wave that comes from just um, kind of outside of Braina, kind of like right here, mm -hmm. and go in that direction. <laughs> I will give it to you. Uh, I will just have them do a dexterity saving throw. Oh, a strength uh, saving throw. Yep, yeah, it's, it's a strength like a... saving throw of uh, DC 15. All right. So the... Merid, so you see this, you start to conjure a large swirl of water underneath, and then you seem to push it as if the water obeys your commands, which it does now because you cast control water. And the Merid will be 
failing that. So he will get pushed, just like uh, the vehicle would. And then the elemental will also. It's been a rough night for these guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so it doesn't say anything beyond that. Um, it just says it like floods the space. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just, what I'll do is I'll push yeah. them back 20 feet. Beautiful. Um, okay, then I think I used all of my movement. Basically, back. what I'm saying is you flooded and you essentially increased the space between the Mirid and the Elemental and the ship. So you did target a vehicle, you targeted your vehicle and pushed you away, which at the same time kind of pushed them away. Beautiful. Um, and then I don't think I have... <laughs> um, the messiah all the shit all the sailors the messiah <laughs> no and is just like up there just like what no it's magic mm-hmm. it's not it's whoa, magic whoa, 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 it's magic no, they can catch um, me, they're gonna so. get copyrighted <laughs> uh and thankfully uh the range on mind whip is actually 90 feet so it stays within uh the myriad stays within range of mind whip okay okay um I don't think I can do anything as a bonus action. Uh, so that's my turn. I rolled temporary hit points and I'm back up to 13 temp. All right. Then once you are done, Frexel is up next. All right. Uh... Actually, at the end of your turn, uh, initiative count 20, uh, there is a little bit of an lair action. So the ship is going to lurch and I need everyone to make a dexterity saving throw. If I'm up in the air, what does that mean for me? That means that you don't have to make it because you're not on the ship. Cool. <laughs> yeah. How many temp HP did I give to Umbrin? 13. 13. 13. Rexel, okay. Rexel is going to use Flash of Genius to help Brena on this saving throw since since she's right on the edge of the ship and that's dicey. So you get plus five to this saving throw. Okay. I can also do a thing. Help. So, what is your flash of genius? Um. Basically, I think from from where he is right now, um. He probably just has the idea to like the planks are a little bit maybe loose on the <laughs> stairs, and so if Brain has got one leg on it, he just kind of like slams down with one of the the armor legs on it so that it kicks up and points her back into the boat. So, like, kind of stumbling a little bit, but stumbling into the boat instead of tumbling overboard. Just enough to kind of counteract the action of the uh, of the ship motion. Rad. Uh, for future reference, you can use that reaction to add it after the roll. Okay, I wasn't sure about yeah, that. Yeah, that's yeah. why That's why I wanted to say it now, because I didn't know for sure. Yep, so uh, the wording, for, so fun fact, if something says makes a roll, or it makes a saving throw or whatever. They have to actually make it first for you. Gotcha. To, okay. Yeah. Well, I already said it, so I'll use it for now. But <laughs> yeah, that's there's good. That's good. Uh, another thing for the magical guidance. It says ability check to reroll our saving throws. Ability check. Saving throws and ability checks are not the same thing, unfortunately. Damn it. Okay, never mind. Uh, and this was a deck save, you said. Yeah. Well, Vrexel got kind of six. <laughs> <laughs> the DC will be 16. No, 15. Sorry. So if you <laughs> fail, you are just knocked prone. Uh, and you will slide. So the ship is dipping to the to port side. Now it's dipping to starboard. So everyone who fails will be knocked prone and slide 10 feet starboard. So 10 feet north. I got, with a plus five, I got a 26, so. <laughs> hey. With a plus four, I got a 14. Oh. So you will slide 10 feet and fall prone. You just kind of slip on the wet deck as it dips, and you catch yourself after 10 feet. Frexel, you don't move 10 feet because you just slam into the, the stairs. Okay. And, Kanari, did you pass? Oh, you didn't have to do it. Moxie, did you pass? I got a 22. So. Uh, yeah, Monk. All right, now it is Rexel's turn. Uh, well, stand up. 
Yeah, it's it really like the like all the ball bearings like and then just sort of picks him up and then um, but uh, okay, Get, well that actually kind of changes things a little bit because um, that's half. So yeah, I'm just gonna end up being out in the open, which I didn't want to be, but that's fine. Um, Ten more feet to pop out from the stairs and just take two lightning launcher attacks uh, at the big the big one. Um, and yeah, unfortunately. Okay. Oh. It is not vulnerable, even though it's water. Apparently, they don't follow Pokemon rules. In D &D. <laughs> no, because oh. they're not water types. They're ice types, Dev. You would know that. They do cold damage. They're <laughs> ice types. You're right. <laughs> uh, but I do have advantage, though, yeah? Yeah. Because the fair type fair Oh, did you roll your concentration check after you took the water jet damage? Oh, I did not. Let me do that. Uh, that's not great. Um, just 10. 10 or higher. Oh, then I'm good. Yeah, it was yeah, a 13. Yeah. 13. All right. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. No, thank you for that. Um, yeah, you have okay, so that's a, that's a total of 20 on the first attack. Uh, hits. Uh, oh, so close to a natural 20. And the second one was a natural 19, so definitely hits. Oh, yeah. Um, all right. Adding an extra d6 to that first one, because I can do that. Uh, that's 16 points of lightning damage. That's really poor rolls. 16. That's just your first attack, right? No, that was both of them. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's uh, one uh, d6 plus five, so not amazing. And then I should have five more feet to just pop back to here. Not quite in the cover that I wanted, but a little yep. better. F cover. And All right. Once you are done, you can press it onto Brena. Nine temporary hit points to Rexel. Nice. Brena's like, oh, they're so far away. And sorry. <laughs> and uh, one, two, I will rule that Moxie five, six, and Brena are not in the bubble since you're 15 feet up. Now Brainna's in the bubble. I moved to this one well, so I can hate it. Brainna's not in the bubble. Mm -mm. I don't think it's... That, I would know. I, not Just because of the, the curvature, yeah. Right. Um, If I'm 15 feet up in the air, though, and so the... What is that? The quarter deck, I think? Yes. If that... If I'm 15 well, feet up in the air and Moxie's also 15 feet up in the air, does that mean we're level with each other? Because technically it's a sphere. Oh yeah, you are. Okay, so Moxie would get it, Brayna wouldn't. Well, yeah, if, it's, if, it's, right on if it's a sphere from you, right? And you're 15 feet up? Yeah. So there's, uh, at the center is the... Is the thing. Yep, yeah, okay, we're good. Okay, we're fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Why is there so Welcome much to math? with Team Reaper. <laughs> <laughs> Geometry. Geometry was my worst oh, no. subject. We fought oh, no. like this. Ugh. Same. Oh, I failed out of whatever math graphs are. I couldn't do graphs to save my life. I couldn't. That's make algebra. Algebra is my favoriteest. Couldn't do it. Um. Okay. Uh. Well, I'm going to uh recklessly swing at this guy. Oh, 19 on the dice, plus 10. Oh, yeah. Uh, so... Where'd my 8 go? There it is. Blech. 12 damage on the first strike. And... 25 for the second hit. To hit. 25 to hit. For... 14 damage... And that is my turn. And I'm just like daring him. Try to well me, guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, after you, it's not elemental one, but it is the mirrored's turn. He is mind whipped, so he has to choose. What does he want to do? Oh, and I need to roll to see if he gets his water jet back. Oh wait, no, that's not a that's not a recharge. He's just gonna use his water jet. 
and he is going to aim this way, and he is going to try and hit Umbrin and Kanari. Did that work? We're ten feet apart from each other, or we have a yeah. five foot. And also yeah. Kanari's up. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, Kanari's up. Me. I keep forgetting that, but so it that, will shoot so Kanari. With the first, well, I mean, that wouldn't have mattered because I was up in that was temporary hit points anyway. Never mind, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. All right. So it is going to specifically aim for Kanari. You're flying up, and Sweet. yeah. Uh, and that is I'm a still DC 16. Okay. So Dexterity. I'm... Emboldening Bond is 30 feet? Yeah, as long as you're 30 feet within anybody. Uh, yeah, myself or um, uh, Reyna. Anyone else? Uh, yeah, and I'm within 30 feet of Moxie, so we're good. Uh, okay. Um, I think... Even with Emboldening Bond, I only got a 15. All right, so you will be... Knocked back 20 feet. Sure. So go ahead and move yourself, um, please. How far is Canary with Fimbrina right this second? Uh, I would say 25 feet. Okay. Uh, subtract six off the damage. All right, so the damage is coming to ya. Okay. You get smackety decked with the water. Didn't like that. That would be 10, 15... 18, so it will be 18 points of damage. Minus 6, Minus six from Brina. so that is 12. I have one temporary hit point left. You um, are also knocked prone. And let me double check the the twilight eyes or uh, steps of night. Because usually if a creature who is flying is knocked prone, they fall. Our, yeah. um, control water is concentration. It is. Is it a constitution saving throw to... Yes. Okay. And um, the DC is 10 on that. Okay. Uh, so did you move yourself 20 feet yet? Uh, sorry, no. Uh, lots to keep track of. Uh, so 5, 10, 15, 20... Okay. All right, and you will also be knocked off of this little little step of light that you're on and crash to the ground, which means that you will take 1d6 bludgeoning damage, so three on top of that as you hit the ground, falling prone. Okay. Um... And here's the renewed Twilight Century position. And... Then the water elemental number one, which is on Brena, is going to see if it gets its whelm back. Concentration saved. Okay. Bet. On control water. Uh, uh, once... Wait, do yes. I also have to roll it for when I hit the deck? Yeah, yeah, that damage will also, but it's just a DC 10. Okay. Um... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, second one is a 17. The elemental does not get its whelm back, so instead it can only make one attack, correct? Yep. So okay. it will make its attack against Brena and it will use its slam. So it reels back, swirling water, seemingly condensing into this hard fist and max ya. That should be this way. Uh, it can actually use its multi-attack, reading the spell. It can take its action, and multi-attack is its action. So it will take both. Mm -hmm. You'll both. Yeah, I, I just didn't it. want it moving anywhere near yeah. me. So. It does It yeah. does have advantage on the attacks, because I reckless, by the way. All right, first slam attack. Uh, that is a... 17. I don't think that hits. All right, the, <laughs> you block it, and then the second one comes your way. And that is a 19 on the die, so that's 26 to hit. Yeah, that'll so, hit. 2 blah, 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 2d8 plus 4 is coming your way as it smacks you right on the side of the jaw. Ouch. Going all like bam, bam. 
Uh, so that is 8 plus 4, so that is 12 bludgeoning damage. Half to Halved. six. And so that is got. your turn. Urgh. Mine is done. Mine is done. And that is all it's got, because now it's Moxie's turn. Oh, it's my turn. Okay. Um, Moxie is going to uh, sigh, because she's all that sweet acrobatics to get up there for nothing and come to me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. Dumb spellcaster is pushing things away and keeping them there. Yeah. I will sink your ship. <laughs> he says as he flails his arm from the far away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh no, hang on. I have to go to so many different places for numbers. Okay, um. Okay, yep. So she's going to attack the element dude. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's going to be a uh, 19. 19, so your glowing inky fist extends out and hits this elemental, sinking into its water, but the there's steam coming off of it from the radiant energy. And oh. a little burst, too, because of the extra force. <laughs> Just like a little crater appears on his body before it comes back, because it's water. Viscosity. Um, okay, so that's going to be... Fluid dynamics. Just saying random science terms. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to science class with Team Reaper. 14, <laughs> 14 damage. 14 damage. Yeah, and then I'm going to attack again. Oh, maybe not. Um, <laughs> the 12. Oh, 12 but won't. it won't hit, right? 12 won't hit. Okay, but I have emboldened on myself. Yeah. Um, so I said it was a 12. Yep. It's going to be a 16 now. I got a 4. Hey, that will definitely hit the water Sweet. elemental. Okay. Oh, max damage. Um, 17? Ooh. Yeah, 17. All right. And then... It now has 69 hit points. Sweet. Nice. Nice. <laughs> oh god, this, these things are Wait, bulky. <laughs> this one fucking element. Oh my god. Wow. Uh, all right. It's gonna be here a while. Yeah, I'm fearing of blowsing and attacking it again. All right. Uh, so that's 21. 21 hits. Um, and that's 13 damage. 13. Damage. All right, one more attack. Um, and then that one's gonna be a fifteen. A fifteen will hit. Okay. Uh. Uh, ten damage. Ten damage. No longer sixty-nine hit points. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me know once your turn is done. Uh, my turn is over. That's all I got. All right. So the water elemental number two is going to take its turn. And it will plunge into the water. Five, 10, 15, 20. Okay, run away all scared. 40, yeah. 50. He's like, I'm out of here. Five. Gotta go. And it is going to reach the top and make two slam attacks against Bosun. Oh. oh no, no not the person! Um, <laughs> would they not have run away at some point? Uh, he is maintaining these railings and these lines because because of the wind catching it and the aqua jet blasting it. He he has to do some work and redo the knots. And since combat's so fast, since he's still he's still working on it because it's combat is. I think this is been like round two, seconds, so this has been like 12 seconds, yeah. Would he seconds. have been... In the with... Twilight Sanctuary? Yeah. Because... No. Where am I... No, where I was. From oh, before, where you were? Man? Yeah, because I was here. Oh, yeah, you were. He's, he's within yeah. 20 feet, yeah. yeah. You can okay. retroactively give him some. Also, yeah. I have a boat in the list of somewhere. I wish I knew where it was. All right, if you find it, please blow it. 
Uh, nine temporary hit points to the bosun. All right, nine temporary hit points to the bosun. Uh, just a reminder, also... bosun is a gun-wielding metallic creature with a cool hat and glowing eyes. Important knowledge. And with the um, ancestral guardian, jump out to protect the bosun. I have already used it this turn. Uh, I don't want the bosun to die. He's super cool. <laughs> All right. So uh, the first attack will actually miss as the bosun ducks underneath it. And okay. then the second attack, he will actually duck under that as well. Ooh. Bosun's best character. I, I, was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking the same thing here. I was like, but crap, I used it on Canari. <laughs> Not really crap. Uh, that is the <laughs> end of its turn. So now we're back up to Umbrin for round Three. Ah. So Tasha's mind whip uh, fades away, and I guess I wasn't going to use it, but since this thing is so tanky, um, I might as well. I'm going to duck into flanking position with Brenna. I'm going to bonus action. Um, Naruto run across the deck. Yeah, I do a cool <laughs> slide as I do it. I'm going to uh, bonus action summon the Shadow Blade and its new scythe form, two-handed scythe. And I'm going to take a big old swing with my new cantrip, Bewitching Blade. That is right. so fucking cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so you see this little this little plank and this lattice work. You kind of run across that like a acrobat, just graceful gazelle, just. Whoosh, whoosh, and then you get to this point, and you pull out your scythe, and you whisper some words in the bewitching blade, and you make an attack. Uh, yeah. Um, it's a natural 18 plus 7, 25. I'm positive will hit. It's going to take 2d8 from the shadow scythe, and 2d8 from the bewitching blade. And 1d6 from sneak attack. That sneak attack. Gotta get it in there. It's 1d6, but I've jumped all these levels in a row for it. <laughs> Alright, so this is all gonna be in psychic damage now? It will also fail its wisdom saving throw. Oh, fail its wisdom save. Oh my god. That's 10 and 2 8. Uh, 26 points of damage. Nice. Alright. And it fails its wisdom say whatever that means so you actually slice it in half and the bottom half kind of just like falls onto the floor and disperses around the top half remains but it seems to be a much more wounded elemental on its last ropes and it's charmed by you until the end of your next turn guys i'm gonna got a huge upgrade <laughs> oh my awesome. god that's amazing damage and that is my uh movement action and bonus action Charmed. That's bloodied. That was charmed. Oop. All right. So once you're done, it is Kamari's turn. I am going to use an action to keep. Um, well, first, I'm going to stand oh, uh, half my movement to come up from prone. All right. Uh, and I'm going to go uh, 15 feet diagonally. One, two, three. Just to come back, so I'm kind of close to the center of everybody again. Um, was that diagonal? And then, uh, 15 feet up in the air. Oh, into the air! Yeah. Sorry, I thought you because, were running across the ship, because, no, like, if you uh, get... There is a certain point on the ship where you would get everybody. Yeah. Um, actually... want to fly, it's okay. Oh, well, I've used it, <laughs> so I might as well... <laughs> I might as well keep using it. Um... Uh, so that's my movement. I am going to use Whirlpool from Control Water. I want to place the center of it uh, right here in the square. So that's a 50 foot wide Whirlpool at its top. Uh, so that should hit the Merid because the Merid is about 25 feet from the center point. So it's a 50 foot diameter or radius? Diameter. 
Oh. So it's 50 foot wide at its mouth, so 25 feet radius. Okay. Um, and from there, it should hit the Nerid. Also, anything within 25 feet of it gets pulled 10 feet towards it, and mm -hmm. it's the ship is far enough away where it won't get pulled in. I'm All right, just tell targeting... me where the center of it is again. Uh, center of it is in this square right up here. Right there. Okay, cool. Yep. I'm going to mark the center, and then I'm going to draw 25 feet, right? Yep. All right, so it will go to here. I think this is a good way to do it. Mm -hmm. What? Mm. Press the wrong button. I think that's it. Yep. All right. Cool. So it will have to make a strength saving throw, I believe. Yep. So it's a strength saving throw at the um, when the creature enters the vortex for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there. Okay. Um, and then on a failed save, it takes 2d8 bludgeoning damage and is caught in the vortex until the spell ends. All right. But at the end of its turn, right? at the beginning of its turn when it beginning starts of, its yeah. turn yeah uh yeah so even though it's like a little bit out of the water with this little typhoon underneath it uh it seems to draw in with this whirlpool that is now swirling near the ship and the myriad is going to have to resist against that cool um at for good measure because it just says i have to maintain concentration on it and not you know, it isn't technically casting a spell. I am going to use the second level spell to cast a uh, spiritual weapon. And I'm going to start doing some damage on Elemental 2. Nice. Bam. Elemental uh, 2 has and... some damage already. Well, I, I will continue the beat down that Brain has started on it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Which Elemental is fairy fired right now? I've lost track. Is it uh, the Mirid and or... the Elemental 2? That's what it is. So this gets you advantage. advantage. Yep. I got the pink ring around him. Uh, Praxelier. Awesome. Uh, that is a... Oh, thank God I had advantage. Um, That is a 24 to hit. Nice. Uh, does a 24 hit, Dev? Yes. Okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I was like, you didn't say anything for a second, and I was like, oh, oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh... <laughs> Of course, I rolled a... twice. They pack. <laughs> of course, I rolled a one on my D8. Uh, so that's oh. just five points of force damage. But still gets damage is damage. Yeah, it still gets hit with a frying pan. That splashes right through it. All right. At the end of your turn, I need everyone to make a dexterity saving throw again as the ship sort of lurches. Um. So oh, much better. I'm still up PC in. PC fifteen. Uh, oh, no. Does that bond, yeah. that warding bond, or whatever, count right now? The emboldening uh, bond, yes. Yes. It affects ability checks, saving throws, and yeah. attack rolls. Attack. I already got eleven temporary hit points from Twilight Sanctuary. Um, I got a dirty twenty for the deck. Twenty-three here. Nineteen. Eight. All right, so everyone who failed, which I think is just Brexel, yeah, you will fall prone and then slide 10 feet this way as the ship oh. lurches port side. And then it's your turn. <laughs> and like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And <laughs> then, uh, yeah, the, the, the lurching of the ship is not, generally speaking, good for Vrexel's armor, which is normally just like a steady, you know, float. It's kind of like constantly doing this like scrambling to try and keep itself right. So that's, Vrexel's not loving this. Um, you but... might have to invest in some like spikes on the end of your little fire Yeah, because so normally, normally they don't, they don't actually touch the ground. They just push off the ground. So it's- I have a climbing kit. We could just use all the pythons. <laughs> Yeah, so right now, Rexel is like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> um, but seeing the bosun get um, uh, get attacked, uh, Rexel will... Am I close enough? Yeah, I'm still good. Um, is going to cast Sanctuary on the bosun. Um, keep him from keep them from being uh, attacked uh, so just some like 
flashes of, of glyphs and text just sort of appear in the air, like just sort of blinking in and out to form a, a shimmering barrier around them, and then two lightning launcher attacks against Elemental 2. Did you caring about the NPCs? I mean, they're keeping our, our ship moving. Dude, yep, that's uh, cool. Oh boy, even with advantage, uh, the first one's a 11. Does not hit. And the second one, uh, second one is a 17. 17 uh, on the elemental or the merit? Yeah. yeah, elemental two. Okay, that hits. Cool. So that's way better than last time. Um, that is 14 points of lightning damage against elemental two. All right. And then, once you are done, you can pass it to Brena. Yep, I'm all, I'm all done. Okay. Oh, uh, actually, before Brena goes, the bosun is going to continue tying things, and I'm just going to have him make a slate of hand check. And he actually finishes one rung and says, just one more to go. Cool. So he has one more to go before he can leave this position. And Good job on the run. We're proud of you with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Vrexel DD, temporary hit points. Uh, I'm at nine from be from before. I rolled 11. Hey. So you get uh, cool. another two, I think. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. What does the bosun get? Uh, the bosun in range? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And Brayna, you're up. The bosun gets 10. I think he had. Uh, he had nine before, so he gets an extra okay. one. That's good. Cool. Um, Brain's gonna swing. Surprise, surprise. And that is... Ooh, that is a 19 on the die, so 29 to hit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, only a two on the damage, though, so two, nine, 11 points on that first attack. How's it looking? Uh, it is... You smashed some of it, and some of the water starts to disperse. Still alive, it's not though. Not looking good. Not looking good. But yeah, still alive. Uh, 25 to hit. Yep. God. Okay, D8, you are fired. Um, <laughs> 2 plus 7, 9, 11 more points of damage. All right, how do you want to kill it? Uh, first whack, cross, second whack, straight up. So it just like goes up you and like part comes the down sea, like rain. Tear it in half and it splashes over the quarter deck, Umbrin, Brena. You're all soaked now, but you already were Haven't soaked. Stopped being wet from last time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to move um this way um in and attempt to assist the bosun if possible. All right. So then it is now the Merit's turn, and he needs to make that strength saving throw. He rolled an eight plus the strength of six, so that is 14. So it fails, right? Uh, which, um, which creature's thing are you using? <laughs> I can't keep track. Merid. Oh. He's in the whirlpool. Oh, the Merid failed. I thought you said the bosun, and I was like, oh. you, would, you would have that information down. Uh, <laughs> it it was a 16, you said? That succeeds. Yeah. I have a DC uh, Oh, no, no, 15. 14. Oh, a 14. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it does fail. Uh, so 2d8 bludgeoning. And it gets pulled 10 feet backwards? Uh, it gets... Towards the center, right? Um, on a failed save, the creature takes one, or 2d8 bludgeoning damages and is caught in the vortex until the spell ends. A creature caught in the vortex can use its action to try to swim away from the vortex, but it has disadvantage on the athletics check to do so. So you're basically trapping it. Yep. Um, yep. Uh, so it takes nine bludgeoning damage. Noise. And it's stuck. Yep. It's sort of like a battle of <laughs> water at this point. Hey, uh, uh, Wyatt, how long is the whirlpool spell? Um, 
So concentration, up concentration for control water is concentration 10 minutes. As an action, I can choose uh, from any of the following effects. And as an action, I can either repeat the same effect or choose a different one. I mean, technically, if we just kept sailing in 10 minutes, this thing would not be able to catch up with us. We're going to leave a, him here again. Yeah, it's a range it's of like, 300 hey. feet, which is the only thing. But, like, I can just keep... Yeah, if we want to. I, I think know. that's an option. Yeah, always an option. I'm, this mirror I... hunts us down to the end of the dungeon because we just keep leaving. <laughs> evil Gorgatula. <laughs> Gorgatula is nice. This guy's evil. Gorgatula is great. <laughs> I have a little doll so, of her. The Merid is not within range to use its water jet. Or Just give up and go home! Throw his trident. All right, so it will cast control water. Ooh. Oh no, wow. it's going to control the how, water now. How far away is it? God damn it, okay. Yeah, it is yeah. going to cast control water and it is going to try and hit the other side of the ship to pull you closer to the whirlpool. Uh, is counterspell from the caster or from the area of effect? You have to target the caster. Okay, never mind then. I'm 80 feet away. Oh no! <laughs> uh, yes. The control water appears. And he starts to use that. Uh, he gets to choose an effect when he casts it. So he is going to choose the flood and attempt to capsize the boat and move it 20 feet closer. Oh, no, it wouldn't, it wouldn't really move the ship, but I kind of already moved them. So I'm going to keep that same. So the ship is going to be drawn 20 feet closer. So what I'm going to do is just move this. Bring the ship to him since he can't move. And I need to use this and then remake it. It's kind of like right there. So getting closer to the whirlpool and then there's a 25% chance that the ship will capsize if it is a certain size. The ship gargantuan? Yeah, it is a gargantuan, so it will not capsize. Does okay. this move elemental two at all? Uh, elemental two will now be under the ship. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, God. Maybe he'll drown down so there. Is, <laughs> uh, so is the well, spiritual weapon, so uh, you can't see them. But the spiritual weapon can technically make an attack okay. <laughs> while it's still within five feet, but not opportunity attack, just on your turn attack. God damn it! <laughs> you got me excited. <laughs> All right, so he pulls you closer with control water, and yeah. Now that he's done, it is Water Elemental 1, who is dead. Yep. Rest his soul. Now it's Moxie's turn. Oh, it's oh, my He never turn. got to be charmed by me. <laughs> I'll do it later. Um, I'm just going to move a little bit. Um, and then I think I have enough. Uh... Yeah, so Moxie is going to use maybe Bolt of Mercy. Bolt right. of Mercy. It, it's a ranged spell, so. Yeah. I finally have ranged things. You have uh, ranged fists. Yeah, but it's only <laughs> 15 feet. 
Yeah. Um, so for anyone watching who is interested, Bewitching Blade and Bolt of Mercy are two cantrips that I have created. Bolt of Mercy, you cannot kill a creature with Bolt of Mercy. You can deal damage, but you'll knock them unconscious if they reach zero as opposed to kill them. And Bewitching Blade... A special thing, because since magic can't be non-lethal. Right, exactly. It's very special. Good for a peace domain, Cleric. Yep. Okay. Sorry to interrupt, but... Go. Uh, I got an 18 to hit. That will definitely hit. Oh, sweet. Uh, that's going to be 15 damage. 15 damage. It's pretty nice. Right. Um, that's your action. Any bonus actions? Uh, does that count as an attack action? or? Uh, it's cast a spell action, so it's one. Okay, so it's not an attack. Yeah. Got it. I got it. Um... Wait, where am I standing in relation to anyone else? One second. Um, again, I have to go to two. I need to write down more things I'm finding. <laughs> write down all of the things. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, five feet. Um, I'm going to move... I don't think I... Oh, wait, no. If I'm standing here, it's five feet, right? With both? Yeah. Okay, I'm so... 15 oh, feet up in the air. air. Oh, yeah. But you'll be next Sorry. to Vexel and Soren. Right. Hang on. Oh, Next to the best party member. True. I mean, yeah, but... Actually, no. That's where I'm going to stay. And I'm going to take a key point to do the dodge bonus action. Mm-hmm. Um, which will give Prexel plus two to AC, I believe. I... And Soren. Oh, it does. Oh yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. because of because of my tattoo. Ah, uh, nice. Yeah. So you get um yeah all allies within five feet of me at the end of my turn receive a plus two bonus to their AC while you remain within five feet of me. Good to know. That's yeah, Moxie cool. is basically there to deflect things, knock things out of the way for you, or to like pull you down, grab mm -hmm. your hair, move you out of the way. Yeah, you, you know. Be being very hands-on with this gnome today. <laughs> just pull your hair, just like... <laughs> God. All right. I'm just trying uh, to get the next ring. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Soon a hawking is going to call him like, Hey, Moxie, when are you going to marry Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> What's the next call? Uh, Elemental 2 appears. Rushes up, <laughs> and then does it. It hasn't used its whelm, so it's going to whelm Brena and Bosun. Oh, Bosun, no! Yeah, see, I was gonna move up there. Maybe I should have. I don't know. Uh, Moxie, do you have temporary hit points from Twilight no. Century? Uh, you get twelve. Oh my god, uh, bro! All right, so whelm is a. Saving throw. DC 15 strength. Um, like a million. A million? <laughs> <laughs> it's a million. Don't worry about it. No, it's like 28 or something. Um, but don't worry. Guess again, actually. Give you a little lower. 31. <laughs> 31. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> I rolled an 18. I used Moxie's thing because I think she's still close enough. And then yep. I have a plus nine. Brenna picks up the water elemental and throws it. <laughs> <laughs> Can I, with that 31, protect the bosun? <laughs> uh, the bosun actually also succeeds. Oh, perfect. Then I don't have to protect the bosun. So you both are pushed out of its space. They pick it up together. <laughs> He just looks at you. You appear to be very strong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm raging. <laughs> uh, it is going to move back down and into the water because it still has a little bit of movement speed. Can I whack at it? A little bit. Uh, it was not an opportunity attack. Oh, wait, it was. Uh, yeah, you can. Nope. That's only a 14. That's its AC. 
Oh, yep. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and you can also add. And you can add Moxie's thing, right? Oh, I no, no, no. You... already used it this turn. I thought no, you said it, I already. Yeah, that was yeah, one yeah, yeah, yeah. one time and yeah. one time and done. I don't think you Ooh. had to use it. I think you just wanted to use it. You are <laughs> correct, you sir. For that. <laughs> <laughs> um, six plus seven plus two is fifteen points of damage as it tries to go Ooh. away. All right, no sentinel or anything, so it still can move. Uh, uh, layer four will be sentinel. Thank you much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 16, so that will be... And we are done with that round, and at the top of the fourth round, we are actually going to take our break a little bit early and do a quick 10-minute break and then come back because I figured we would probably go past our mid-break through another round because they can be a little lengthy. So we will be back soon. Soon. If you are taking me down to the depths, I will take your ship with me. And now we're back to the top of the order with Umbrin. Uh, so, Jeff, tell me, like, where's about, like, obviously we can see them on the map, but, like, from eye level here on the ship, where are these things in relation? Yeah, so it's about 25. The ship side is about anywhere from 15 to 25 feet since it's going uh, and it seems to go from eye level to maybe not eye level to above uh, just because of the waves so so elemental 2 you said he went under the water oh no he just uh, went back down to the water and backed up he's kind of like on the surface just swirling around and then the myriad um, is he like in the whirlpool and yep. you can't see him or is he tall enough to kind of get a little nope you can see him especially since they okay. made him a huge creature he's up out of the water he's just caught in the whirlpool like halfway up you can see halfway up the bottom half is just stuck i feel um, like a water elemental should have a feature that's like unaffected by <laughs> control water or water manipulation but nope He's not the master of water. He simply was born in it. I'm going to try something dumb, um, but it'll be cool if it works. I'm going to attempt to throw my two-handed scythe and kind of like that whirling blade motion at the myriad. <laughs> he is, uh, the range on the thrown weapon is uh, 20 feet to 60 feet, so it will be at disadvantage. Actually, it will be at a normal because fairy fire's still up. <laughs> I love it. Yes, bitch. <laughs> There's no sneak attack. So you're um, seeing him glowing and such. Uh, but but yeah. it's going to be super cool. Yeah, for flavor, I get up on the railing. I like balance and I do the like big anime throw with it. Come on. Be a 20. <laughs> Starts whirling. So what do you mean no sneak attack? <laughs> 19! No, it's so close to a 20. Oh, it would have been so cool if it critted. Um, yeah, natural 19. Oh, that would have been so cool. It's gonna do the, the 2d8, because I can't be witch, and I can't sneak attack on it. Right. Uh, so he's gonna take 11 points of psychic damage as it just smacks him straight in the face. It sort of uh, slices <laughs> part of his face, and even though the shadow blade doesn't actually deal damage, it seems to cause a glowing purple mark across his cheek. Just a little insult to injury, and then I bonus action to call it back. And yes. then I'm gonna hop off the railing uh, and just back up my feet. That's cool. So that was very it kind cool. of <laughs> disappears into uh, shadows and clouds and whatever it disappears and then reappears back in your hands i was really expecting it with disadvantage and to not work and just it would be funny uh canari <laughs> is up next okay so we said that it the boat is close enough that it would start getting pulled into the whirlpool if i leave okay yep. time for some stupid stuff i'm gonna use uh control water to redirect flow and shoot this mirror 300 feet in the air 
<laughs> yeah, it works. Get I was him. actually uh, thinking the married could do that. So I already had that justified <laughs> in my mind. So you're all good. Uh, yeah, work. so uh, 300 feet in the air. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot so, of fall damage. I love this dumb spell so much. <laughs> so instead of being sunk below, uh, it causes this almost reverse effect as the swirling whirlpool, this vortex below, begins to change immediately, causing it to burst out and launch the married 300 feet in the air. Mm-hmm. As a fly so speed, the, the, so it doesn't the, just fall. But... The whirlpool oh, well. like collapses in on itself, and that's what causes Like, have you ever seen water collapse? Mm-hmm. Like, it, that's what it does. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. Man, imagine how great it would have been if he couldn't fly and he would take 30 D6 damage. <laughs> That's what I was trying to do. I didn't realize he had a fly speed, but it, I mean, I forgot he had a fly speed. Whatever. Well, um, it will take uh, some turns for him <laughs> to get back. <laughs> hey, if that's all we need. Oh. Hey, let's leave him here. Uh, and just... as, he, as you're launching him, he's just like, ah! <laughs> Doppler effect. And all of a sudden, it's quiet. Blasting off again! Um, and then as a bonus action, I'm going to move my spiritual weapon from underneath the boat and smack yes. Elemental 2 in the face. Uh, it is not within 20 feet. Even Can I move it out from underneath oh, wait, the wait. boat? So it's just... <laughs> yeah, so it can get right there. Uh, you can't see it. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I'll have spiritual weapon be there, and then I'm just gonna go. I'll go right here just to get all of the party, and and I'll come back down. Um, I'm just gonna hover five feet above the boat of the deck just in case the boat starts to lurch around and stuff. Right, you. Uh, it does lurch a little bit, just the. The change in the flow of the water with the water jet and the, what the mirror did last time, the boat lurches again to the right, getting pulled, and so everyone needs to make a dexterity saving throw, DC 15. Me too. Pretty you much. are now on the, on the ship. I said I'm five feet above. Oh, five feet. Uh, yep. You can do it at advantage, because it might hit you. That's fair. I'm fine. 21. 18. <laughs> Jacob has that look on his face. <laughs> <laughs> muted. Jacob. You're muted. Six. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Slide nope. 10 feet I more. I throw every time. <laughs> oh, no. Back into this position. Mom, you can better. get an opportunity <laughs> attack if you would like. <laughs> and... <laughs> um, not much better for Umbra. That's a 10. Ooh. You slide, because you can't slide the full 10 feet, you will instead take 1d6 bludgeoning damage as you hit the railing as you fall prone. So that will be 6 bludgeoning. So concentration okay. check on the shadow blade. Oh yeah, 16 plus... Uh, okay. Three. Oh, six, I'm so sorry. 16 plus 6. Alright. Now that initiative count 20 is through, it is now Vrexel's turn again. All right. Um, We're going to establish that all the crew members have a feature in their stat block that says that they cannot be knocked prone while on a ship. <laughs> <laughs> that's fun. I mean, it's yeah, seen... called sea legs. Yeah, yeah. sea legs. They've all got is. their yep. sea legs. Oh, what if, oh, I should give each of you a magic item that are boots that give you sea legs. <laughs> you, <should. laughs> you, sea legs. Sea legs. Items. you can pick up sea legs real fast. You can just get each of the time Panara just flies for three minutes and then just immediately falls over. <laughs> <laughs> Brexel's turn. Um, okay, this Merid is, it's kind of, I know it's a like a water type, but like it kind of was like icy, <laughs> right? Uh, this guy, the ice wasn't from him. It was from the fountain and he was using the water of the fountain for the ice effects. Okay, would you rule that the spell Shatter, which uh, creatures made of inorganic materials such as stone, crystal, or metal has disadvantage on that saving throw, 
if it's made of water? No. Okay. Unfortunately. I was gonna say, if, if he was like icy, then I would think so, but all right. Yeah. Have you shot a bullet in water before? Yeah. All right. In you that know case. that universal <laughs> thing everyone's done. <laughs> You Come know. On. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what if you put that water in a barrel? <laughs> in that case, um, fish. yeah. In that case, I'll just try and oh well. Elemental two is never mind. They're way up there. Uh, poke out. Oh, stand up first. <laughs> I keep falling over. Um, <laughs> You didn't build your machine for a boat, even though no. you all have been talking about, oh, the next level's gonna be the water, water level. It's gonna have a boat. I was not prepared. <laughs> hey. I thought the water level would be like in a few levels, not like you know, immediately. Yeah. If you had oh, spider well, climb okay. on you, if you had spider climb on you, you wouldn't be doing this. You'd be. I mean, it's. Rexel, do I you I want the prepared. wand of webs? <laughs> you can web yourself to the deck. <laughs> Ooh. Um, yeah, I'll just take two lightning launcher shots at the Merid then. Uh, so, that's a total of 20. Wait, and... what, what's the range on lightning launcher? I, the like Merid's 300 feet. feet in the air. Oh, the oh Merid? yeah! <laughs> the Merid's 300 feet in the air. Oh, I thought it was the elemental that was 300 feet no, in the air. No, the elemental's there. Oh, the Merid is. <laughs> <laughs> then it, then the elemental then for sure. <laughs> oh boy. Um. A, se a second attack is um. What's my plus on this? A uh, second attack is a fourteen. A fourteen, on the elemental will hit. Hey, cool. So right. that's a total of three d six plus ten. Two, yeah, plus two of your intelligence. Yeah. Um. So that is a seventeen points of lightning damage. All right. And then, yeah, I'll just stay there. <laughs> All right, once you are done, it is Brainna again. So, question. Yeah. This rigging that's in front of me, how does that yeah. look? Uh, it looks taut. Nothing Holding hanging. Holding up the sails. Nothing hanging. Uh, there's that I can do some... a do a fun thing again. Oh, you can grab the ropes and lean out. Uh, you just won't be within five feet of the elemental. I would like to be within five feet of the elemental, though. You gotta be <laughs> in either of these. You gotta be within five feet. You can jump and make the attack, both attacks as you're descending. We gotta get you like a pole arm or something. No, I need a reach weapon. Gotta jump in the water. I don't wanna yeah, jump like in the water. Don't. Sure yeah, could... swim. Mm, hold on. Ask Kanari to shoot you 300 feet in the air. <laughs> <laughs> that would. I could catch you. <laughs> It'll be fine. You'd be fine. Oh, he's still just so far away. Okay, fine. I'm gonna hawk two javelins. <laughs> Where's my javelin stuff? Oh, there it is. Ooh, it's plus eight. Uh, 23 and a 25 on the two javelin hooking. Yeah, those will both hit. Okay. Ugh, garbage. Uh, four... 14, and I can't add rage. 14 damage total for the both of them. 14 damage total. But I don't drop rage because I did damage. Rawr. So you do drop your javelin into the ocean. I do drop my javelins, though. That's very sad. I you, don't like... have to, you don't have to deal damage. You just have to make an attack. Or take damage to maintain your rage. So just the very act of throwing your javelin is enough. Yup. Hold on. Could you technically just like swing in the air and call it an attack to keep your rage up? <laughs> I think you actually have to attack a creature. No. Well, but... what if your intelligence is really low and you're. <laughs> what you if the creature is like, like a fly? <laughs> I can see. I, I, I will, I will, <laughs> I will put this out there. Brain's intelligence is actually not that low. She's got a 12. 
Yeah, well, I didn't mean Brenna. I was just thinking for <laughs> in future general. characters. Yeah. In general, idiots across the board. Okay, well, if I um, make an idiot. so ancestral protectors is a creature you hit with an attack on your turn, so the range attacks count. So he's got disadvantage yep. on anyone but me. Yep. Um, but I did the fourteen points of damage, and I'm pouting a little bit, and that's my turn. All right. So, what are elemental? Oh, we know. The Merid oh, is... Brandon gets uh, 10 HP. Ooh, yeah. Brandon does get 10 HP. As 10 temporary hit points. The water, cool. the Merid, above, turns invisible. Rude. Yeah, he ain't coming back. Yeah, we scared him off this time. Uh... So he turned invisible. Is he concentrating on that spell then? Because then his control water would drop. It does drop. Okay, cool. You feel the seas calm around you. And then it's Moxie's turn. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of what to do this whole time. Um. Uh, oh gosh. Let me make sure. <laughs> yeah, okay. Moxie's gonna just uh, run this way. Maybe? Hang on. Yeah, and so the elemental is 15 feet away, right? Yep. Cool, Moxie's gonna punch it. <laughs> it's actually only 10 feet away. So. <laughs> and you yeah. have advantage still. Oh, I didn't know I had it in the first place. <laughs> the fairy fire's been up. Oh, gosh. Well, that didn't help at all. I rolled a two to three. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least that's just your first attack. So, still got an array. Yeah, it's fine. All right. So, next attack. Bam. All right. Uh, 17 plus eight. All right. Yes. Um, <clears throat> That'll be... Uh, 10 damage. Alright. And then... What was the... Okay. Um, so then I'm going to just do more punching. I mean, like, it's, it's gonna happen. Fear of blows? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Uh, so that's, uh, 19? Yeah. And that's 12 damage. Mm -hmm. And then 21. Mm -hmm. And that's another 10. <clears throat> All right. It's not looking too hot. Uh, it seems to be suffering some of the similar things, like different water uh, has fallen off of it. it. Hasn't lost its size, but it appears to be like losing its shape. And then it is its turn. It's whelm back. So it is going to try and whelm the two of you. Oh, no. So I need you both to make strength saving throws. Oh, no. DC 15. Did Moxie already have temporary hit points? Yes. OK. 31. All right. <laughs> What's it? What is it? Uh, strength saving throw, DC 15. Okay, so 8. 13. Hang on. Uh, Have you added your bonding thing yet? If yeah. You like it? Yeah. Um, 13? 16? 16! Hey! Yes. Mm. Just. I just, never get to do the things I want. Just put me over the edge with that extra three. <laughs> there you go. I think you I think are... Brayna like has partially shoved you out of the way too with her thirty-one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, even though, yeah. So you get pushed out of the way. Push me back behind the bosun. Yeah. And now it is back to the top of the round. Go round five. Umbrin's turn. 
Uh, yeah, now that all my friends are around the thing, I was gonna throw my, uh, thing again, but I don't have to. We're just, let's all just wail on this guy. Yeah, you have advantage. Yeah, with another bewitching blade. And with sneak attack. Advantage. Oh no! Oh no! Yuri, you have broken oh, my no. cameras! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! At least we can still hear you. I don't know what happened! I think you're that still in weird. the same spot. Yeah, you're still in the same spot. So Am I still in the same spot? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it will fail its is, wisdom uh, saving throw. Another 19, because this guy's oh. rock. Nice. Um, so that's going to be 4d8. Um, not as banging damage this time around. Also, it's great I don't have to remember that one of these is fire damage now. That's going to be 10... Uh, 17 points of psychic damage. Alright, it's still up, but you slice through it, but it is charmed by you. Thank you, I'm so charmed. <laughs> Alright, once you are done, Kanari. Hmm. It's your turn, I think. Yeah. Um, Does anyone remember the number I just said? 17. 17. Okay, so if it's charmed by you, Don't. that means yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so spiritual weapon still has another what six rounds after this, so that's fine. Um, control water. So uh, you can attack it. Does that break the charm effect on it, though? No. Uh, it's whatever. We're all gonna hit it. Don't worry. Yeah, uh, that it's... relationship, the charmed and the elemental, is between specifically between Umbrin and the elemental. So, if Umbrin okay. attacks, then the charmed ends. But if anyone else attacks, it's fine. And we're all. That's gonna... good to know. Yeah, it's the only thing on deck. Don't even worry about breaking charm. Great. Uh, spiritual weapon's gonna go after this thing. Uh, uh, does a four? Wait, no, I still have emboldening bond. Uh, does a seventeen hit? A seventeen does hit. Cool. Um, emboldening bond. Nice. Uh, so it will take eleven points of force damage. Okay. Um. Then, so I still have my action. The Merit had fairy fire on it, right? Yeah. So it can't so be invisible? So with your vision, you see a thin outline. It just doesn't get the benefits of invisibility, but it's still a little too far for anyone other than yourself to see it. Yeah. Uh, I'll just call out to everybody. It's like, uh, Still really high up there, but probably gonna come back and be pissed. So, uh, hate on to something, and Canary's gonna redirect. He's gonna come back and be pissed every single time. Don't yeah. worry about it. Uh, Canary's gonna redirect flow and just shoot the ship. Um, <laughs> like, okay. just have it add some speed along to just, right. like, uh, yeah, I think, and we could flavor it as, like, the help action for the captain or, like, however you want to yeah. do it, but I'm just trying to get this uh, this, uh, galleon up and moving. And all give right. it a little bit of stability after all the waves and stuff. Actually, that'll be what I'll do. I'll try and, like, stabilize it and give the health action that way. Alright. Sounds good. There is a strong wind. It's been whipping things around, uh, but the waves have been quite tumultuous. You steady it and it seems to have this steadying effect. So everyone has advantage on their dexterity saving throw this turn. Oh, okay. As it lurches a little bit, but not quite as much. Not just quite. Two ports. 17 plus four, 21. Ooh. All right, you're fine. Natural 20. You are more than fine. 15. You actually do a backflip and <laughs> <laughs> you are good. Is emboldening bond only once per turn? Once per turn, but not once per round. 
So now that it's init like the lair action's turn, it's a I can new get turn. it back. Okay. Yep. I don't think I need it, um, but that is good to know. Uh, nineteen. Yeah, you're good. Nope. Also a nineteen. Oh, hey. Hey. Look at us getting our sea legs. <laughs> All right, Brexel, it is your turn. All right, uh, that group's got the got that other thing. Um, yeah, I'm gonna just get ready. I assume that the Merid is going to come down behind the ship whenever it lands, right? Since we are, in that case. Um, <laughs> You're creating a recurring villain. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, I think it's fun. <laughs> I mean, we already have eggs, so we'll just add them to the list. <laughs> oh no, they're gonna team up. Oh no. Frexel does know that some genies have the potential to grant wishes. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Vrexel's gonna What's Ag gonna do? Take a level of genie warlock? Like, whatever. Fuck that guy. Reginald would be upset. Like, yeah. I want to be the only shooter. Stealing, stealing his thunder. Um, you, yeah, Vrexel's <laughs> just gonna dash to the, to the, um, uh, aft side of the boat to try and get, um, get a better angle on this merit whenever it comes down. So that's it. All right, Raina's turn. Okay. Um... It has one hit point. Does it really? <laughs> and you have advantage. <laughs> just, just look at it real mean and it'll just like... I'm gonna do that. You just hear... 23 to hit. And that hits. For 15 damage. 15 damage is enough to kill it. How do you want to kill it? Um, <clears throat> so she, uh, Vrena looks at a mean and then just boops him on the nose with her hammer. <laughs> and then just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, uh, that's about. The bosun finished what he was doing, right? Yeah. Anything else need tying down while I'm... Those over there. What? Those over there. Oh. Uh, the, the, the more lie. The, the more rigging. <laughs> Brandon will run and go... <laughs> Look at them checking the terms. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Brandon will run over to where he's pointing and start... He follows you. Yeah. Okay, that's my turn. Moxie, it is your turn. <clears throat> oh, well, you know, seems like things are good here. So, uh... Are we seriously going to wait for this guy to very slowly descend? <laughs> yeah, like, uh, uh, Moxie would probably... Ooh. The cameras are very much wrong. When did that happen? They were not wrong before. Whoa, what happened? I don't know. Yeah. Sorry. Oh. I will now be playing the role of Canari. <laughs> In the DM now. <laughs> I, don't, uh, I, don't, I don't know when that happened. <laughs> oh, well, gosh, I know I'm what it happened, but I looked and they were not that way. Crunch, 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 crunch. Okay. <laughs> Jacob uh, still so, uh, gets to be Braxel. And Brayna still gets to be Brayna. <laughs> yeah. Well, because, because it's Jacob's meeting, and I'm... It's mm. my view, mm. so I don't move and Jacob... Jacob Okay. Nag, you can would drag... you like to be Umbran for a while? Reyna, you can uh, uh... you can drag people's video screens. Yeah, I am. Okay, cool. Because I know I can grab Yuri and switch places with Jacob. Yes. But it like, well, I mean, causes it, everything it, to it, shift. In uh, process. You get to go over there. Sit in the middle of your camera, Dev. <laughs> By the way, Moxie, at the end of your turn, <laughs> combat is over. As okay. your ship speeds forward with the wind and the right. assistance of Canaria's control water. Well, all things considered, I think that went rather well. Who's this? Yeah. I definitely was a little panicked. 
No, that was brilliant. I loved all that. It was like fun, yeah, thank ironic you. water twist. You did a brilliant job, Captain Barbarossa Sphinx. Thank you. <laughs> Canary's just gonna like try and keep, because I think what we were on round five. So I mean, she still has this for I think like thirty-five more rounds. Uh, Captain Barbarossa will also shout, "Feel free to go below deck. We've got to cover it up here." I'll just stay until my spell runs out, uh, just to like keep an eye out for the merit or anything else that comes out of the depths. Medical officer Waves can show you down. Uh, Waves, as a reminder, is a triton. Blue skins, but he wears the, the sailing hats, the leathers, and he doesn't seem to mind the rain. Yeah, if you will just come with me, we I will show you below and where you might stay. Uh, I will go below. I will accept the kind offer. I don't want to be rude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, uh, it's not cramped underneath. Well, it's, it, it, there's not quite a lot of space because we have lots of supplies. Okay. So, hopefully you do not mind sharing a space and room with others. He leads you down and takes you to the lower deck. Well, first, we, since we're here, that's the privy over there, the front. Or, as some would call, the... Actually, I have no idea. Stern? Nope. Turns in the back. What's the front again? You bow to the front. Bow. Stern is in the back. Door to bow. And then in the back, we have three rooms, two beds in each. Uh, there's, actually, there's a total of three beds. <laughs> My bad. Total of three beds. <laughs> and there's a privy near there as well. So you can stay in those rooms. I will lead you there. These are Medical supplies. Uh, may I ask what yes. your mission statement is? Why you're on the high seas and what you're potentially bringing with you? Also, do you're you know heading? why we're here? I thought <laughs> that you would be briefed before you were sent to our ship. Unfortunately, we were not. So if you could be so kind as to fill us in, we would greatly appreciate it. You did, you did not come by way of teleportation circle? Well, oh, we most order. certainly did, yes. It was just a rush order. They said that we were needed. And... Oh, well. We... I will let the captain know, and then we will meet on the main deck. Not the room that you came out of with the teleportation circle, but the room across the way. That is our designated meeting room with all of the information that we have. Of course, and continue your tour. The captain's quarters is right there as well. Wonderful. Uh, yes, your room's back here. And then below, there's not much that you need down there. There is an armory where we keep supplies for weaponry and such, but it appears that you are all well stocked already. Just the basics, pistols, Swords, cutlasses, grappling hooks. Frexel's eyes go very hammer. wide at the mention of pistols. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, you wouldn't have to have any crossbows down there, would you? The crossbows? People haven't used crossbows for 200 years. Uh, Umbrin, I have a crossbow if you want it. I've been thinking something. <laughs> as long as I get my gun! <laughs> I have uh, this grappling hook, which I've attached to rope. But what if I could take rope and string it to a crossbow 
and have the grappling hook at the end of it kind of to like shoot a grappling hook. I don't know. And then if you is... could do like a reeling mechanism with it. Is that possible, Vrexel? It oh, is possible. <laughs> By the way. But because would... in the player's handbook, it does not include what the grappling hook does. <laughs> but could you make a grappling gun with it? As uh, as you're yeah. describing it, Vrexel's using minor illusion to just sort of like already sort of prototype out what it would look like. I mean, You're Tony like Starking it. Yeah, 100%. Oh. I mean, I'm gonna hand Rex on my grappling hook and like see if he can make me a grappling gun. It would require a Tinker's tool check. Not now, but I mean when we have first time. Cool. Yeah, I, I'll take a look at that. that uh... Probably wouldn't be too bad. That same room where we will be meeting to go over information is the same room that oh, we will have dinner in two hours. Feel free to join. Hey, thank you. That's pretty much the tour. There's nothing else. All these materials are foods, alcohols, supplies, gunpowder. We don't have cannons aboard. We're not a fighting vessel. We're merely here for transport, trade, and our own grand search. We do have the ballista up top, but that's the most that we have. And it's not on the map, but there is a ballista. <laughs> <laughs> a grand search. Any questions? Uh, Where did you say the alcohol was? Uh, actually, these barrels right here, he goes to, like, the side of a ship or something. Uh, this contains beer. And then this box over here, he, uh, grabs the top and lifts it up, and you see several bottles of rum and some whiskey and such. And, um, uh, where did you just... say the, where did you say the gunpowder was? Oh, the gunpowder is in the hold below. Vexel hits that way. As well as the pistols and the armory, as I saw your face alight. I uh, will uh, follow Rexel as he goes to check out the armory. And dinner is in two hours. But if you come up in one hour, we can probably discuss what our mission is. Frexel and Umbrin, you head to the hold, you go down the stairs, the hold, uh, there's some bits of, like, puddles of water here and there from, like, small leaks in the, the side of the ship. A good mending spell could probably fix some of the smaller cracks, but it seems to be fairly, fairly well sealed otherwise. The, you see barrels of what appears to be barrels suited for gunpowder, and then you see the doors to the armory at the bow of the ship. This, this is fascinating. I know uh, there's some who've experimented with this uh, outside of the Magisterium, but uh, not, uh, not that I've ever really been able to get my hands on. Just kind of looks around, like, takes a little pinch out. Taste it. Takes a, takes a, a, a small vial and just like scoops the tiny little bit out. If anyone seems like if anybody is down there and seems to notice, they'll try and like. But like if any of the crew are like, don't touch that. We'll we'll try and maybe. Yeah, Umbrin is here yeah. to run like distraction. Like he like opens yeah. his like cloak reel and like talks to him and is like, but tell me about something as Rex will, like <laughs> just find him. Just takes a small small vial. Teamwork. Do you head to the armory? Yeah. Is it you unlocked? You go to the armory and you see a sign, armory, with a U. And you British. check <laughs> the door handle and it opens. This seems seem like... very trustworthy of you. <laughs> 
Seems like an OSHA hazard. Anyway, uh, okay. <laughs> These doors should be properly locked at all times. OSHA. Did you say ocean truck? <laughs> when you go inside, you see a variety of muskets. Oh, wow. And a variety of pistols. They all do the same thing. It's just there's... They're in a structured placement, and there's multiple. So, yeah. Do I mean, how much... I mean, Vrexel can probably pretty instantly get a sense of, like, vaguely what they do but how much experience has he had with something like this does he know how these would would work at a deeper level other than just like yeah they you know shoot things yeah you've read about it in a paper written by this guy named wenry cogwell or something oh. and you read about the this essay on the nature of firearms and okay. the nation of gnomes who seem to have pioneered mm -hmm. this this type of weapon um how heavy are the larger ones muskets are yeah. 10 pounds pistols are three i'm just picturing little no with big gun <laughs> I, I was gonna say straight under bus eight. Like, yeah, like really small. I don't know if... I feel like I, he'll probably take the smaller, one of the smaller ones. Because otherwise, yeah, that recoil is going to like... <laughs> yeah, and are you we are... aware of Gatling technology? Like you could make this shoot bullets really fast, like mount it on oh. your armor? Or oh, we that... will be. <laughs> is that a little too advanced for, you know... You'll be able to at least attach the pistol to the armor in some way. You're thinking that like there's a way to do this make it work and you investigate the barrel and you kind of know what type of ammo that they use they use the round balls if if nobody is down here and nobody seems to be checking on this in any way yeah Vrexel's pocketing one hundred percent yeah uh the way that they're mounted on the walls does it look like people have taken these or people grab them when attacks are coming is there a uh, registry down here or Give me an investigation check. Not fantastic. 13. 26. Uh, both of you see that these guns have been used prior. Uh, there's gunpowder residue across them. And some of them seem to have initials carved into the hilts. However, there are a few four that don't have initials in the pistols and then two in the muskets that don't have initials you also Brexel, you will find a container of approximately 50 of these bullets and there's multiple of them so you think eh probably probably can take a whole one without it being missed too much okay yeah. Um, for purposes of the item, which kind of pistol is this? There are a few on. Uh, the normal standard pistol. Normal standard, okay. And how many bullets are in this? Uh... 50. 50. Would we be remiss if we were just to drop an extra one or two in the bag of holes again, made as if nothing happened? Uh, I mean... Yeah, these things are probably pretty volatile. If one doesn't go well, maybe it would be good to have a spare. I mean, if there's six extras just laying around, no one is taking things to. I'd love to one. practice with them of my own accord sometime. Um, yeah, go, I mean, so I, yeah, I don't mean to imply you can't take one. Go, take one. I would like to take two pistols and keep them uh, hidden on my person, and I would like to put one of the muskets in the back of the thing. All right. You slip them on in, and you uh, get them hidden, and yeah, kind of works. Um, also, with the 26, you do find that there is a... There doesn't seem to be, like, a ledger 
or a checkout or anything. Uh, but you do find this sign that seems to be dusty and you wipe it off and uh, the sign says uh, just don't shoot anyone on the ship in the crew <laughs> don't shoot your old crewmates it, oh, no. yeah. good crew don't, don't shoot fire. crew good crew don't shoot crew that's what it says <laughs> Zero days. All employees must yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Vrexel's eyes are just like saucers, but like me, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So uh, I'll put one musket in in the haversack, and then w just one on me if uh, mm -hmm. if Umbrin's taking two. So is gunpowder widely known about in the Magisterium? Uh, as a concept, yes. Uh, but there's not been, yeah, there's not been an industry that has created a way to make gunpowder in the Magisterium yet. I would like to take three vials worth of gunpowder, and I'm going to send it to Lady Argent the next time I call home. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> This Are can those, only uh, end well. Secret espionage <laughs> yeah. notes on Brexel's own. Hey, if I can help how Stelronia get ahead by like just <laughs> shipping them gunpowder <laughs> so they can learn how to manufacture it, oh, I will be more than worth my weight in gold. Alright. What would you all like to do before your meeting time? Anything? Uh, Kanari would be exploring up on deck after the, um, after control water ends. I think she's just keeping a lookout and trying to meet, or just observe more members of the crew. Hey, yeah. I mean, you see multiple members of crew. While you are heading back up, you actually see some other members of the crew who are sitting on some boxes in the distance kind of just like eating some rations a drinking drinking some drink uh, it appears to be two women and a goblin no not a goblin yes a goblin <laughs> two women and a goblin now on I... NBC <laughs> I'll uh, walk up to them and uh, say up uh, Hi. Mind if I join you? Oh, we don't mind. Yeah. Pull up a seat. She gestures to the to the crates. I'll pick one up and kind of <laughs> awkwardly wobble over. Still oh, these trying are to get two my... human women, and they look identical, save one of them who is missing an arm that has been replaced with a mechanical prosthetic. Nice. She's smoking a pipe. She takes a big hit, blows it off to the side, and then slams some ale, flips her hair off a bit. You're kind of cute. Oh, uh, thank you. And then uh. the other one, she seems to be in a corset with a little dagger by her side. She has a violin seem to be strapped across her back and this large frilly hat that has various flora wrapped around it. And she elbows her sister and says, Alex Mora, stop it with that. You don't want to scare off the new people. <laughs> All right, Trinthus. You always spoiled, especially since I haven't seen action for quite some days because there's not a lot of you, of, of women. She gestures to Kanari at sea, so if you ever do feel some sort of way, Lix Mora! She winks at you. <laughs> I'm like, Kanari's full on blushing and she turns <laughs> to the goblin and says that, hey. Hi, uh, my name's Kanari. 
<laughs> they call me Short Stack. Short Stack, it's nice to meet you. Yeah. And I am Lady Lixmora, but you can just call me Lix. And, uh... Lixmora <laughs> is fine. Says, oh, <laughs> and I... I'm referred to as Lady Trimpus, and... Please ignore my sister. She I'm... was... She was born after me, and I came out with all the talents. Lixmora hits her pipe, you came out with all of the stupidity. I came out a genius. And looks more is the one with the um, uh, mechanical arm. Mechanical arm. Cool. Okay. Oh, and this is my pet. And then a uh, little red panda pops out with a with a hat. Uh, but oh. the red panda seems seems off a bit. Uh, you're you're thinking this is close. Like the fur seems to be maybe fake or something, and it seems to be. The same type of thing that Soren is, a homunculus. Hmm. Um, uh, Kanari just goes, uh, do you mind if I, do, can I? Pet him? Yeah, you might. Oh yeah. my god, you're the cutest little thing I've ever, and Kanari is just, just like, just like, uh, scratching under its chin and like. Her name yeah. is Cheddar. <gasps> oh, so my. that bitch on homunculus, bitches love homunculus. <laughs> <laughs> Trinthus gives a, a, sh a little little smirk at Kanari and her innocence and such, and <laughs> grabs the side of the crate and starts kicking her feet a little bit. It is really nice to have more people on the ship. Yeah, uh, I wasn't expecting to come out of a supply closet into the middle of a, uh, a, a fight with a married and two elementals, but, you know, uh, it's what it is. Oh, no, you didn't come out of the spy closet. You came out of the captain's quarters. Oh, captain's quarters. Sorry, I... Yeah, the teleportation's still in there. Yeah, I get turned around so easily. The, My bad. Assembly sent you, right? That wasn't uh, just an accident. No, uh, they did. It just we hadn't had a ton of time to really get our bearings before they said, off you go, and just kind of put us in the teleportation circle, so... If any of you need boots that make it so that you don't fall around on the ship, uh, Short Stack holds up his booted feet. I make them. That would They're not be... cheap, though. They're two gold pieces. Okay. Uh, well, I have some uh, Her nice... Boot? Oh, four gold pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Canary's just kind of like sitting there, just like twiddling her thumbs. Them. I will definitely bring that up to my companions. Uh, Quite the capitalist, isn't he? <laughs> I. Well, I mean, is this ship for <laughs> trade or just traveling? Or, I mean, we're kind of bound within I thought you would know already like I said they kind of pushed us through last minute and you know how it is they don't really tell you much I mean I, roll I, a deception check fuck mm. me okay <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't even has know been, what my charisma is has it been uh, 10 minutes yet since the fight yeah it's been, okay. yeah. It's been probably like 15 minutes by now I'll guide minutes. myself <laughs> just just out of the ten minutes. Um, uh, it's a, it's a thirteen. Hmm. It's strange that they want to tell you what you needed to know. Well, <laughs> We're on a treasure hunt. We are searching for a legendary treasure, and uh, the captain called a meeting uh, to for us to sort of explain it to you. So. Um, I'm the resident lore keeper around here, so I will be one who will explain everything. But when your team is all here, so I don't have to repeat it. I think totally understandable. <laughs> I think at this point, so Brayna had been just inventorying all the alcohol that was there to find the good stuff. <laughs> uh, Brayna's like uh, buried in crates, like just like 
completely in the depths of it because mm -hmm. there's there's stacks and then you just see Brenna's mohawk popping up mm -hmm. going around these boxes like a shark so at some point she <laughs> finds she finds the good stuff and comes out Knar, i found the good stuff you want some uh maybe after the meeting uh that's my favorite type of whiskey it's uh, the best kind i don't know where you guys got it this is hard hard to find or find where i come from this is good stuff i know Fire Newts, best brands. <sighs> nice. Yeah, Brandon's very excited. She's like, she's got so she's got brewer supplies. So she's got like a little a little shot. I think she got like a little shot glass like collection. She pulls out a little shot glass. Want one? Yes. <laughs> Let's do. How about we do two each, you and me? Oh yes. Brandon's all about this. I think uh, right at about this point, Moxie will come sliding up and be like, shots? uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, ooh. I like this team. So many ladies. We'll get along. Shots? Shot, shot, shot. Canary, are you gonna partake? Trinthus? Oh, yeah, definitely. I will never pass up shots. But, you know, you know me. Too many in me, and all of a sudden, I'm trying to talk the dolphins into jumping on board so that we can play a rousing round of the uh, Brina cards. Brina hands her a full shot. They they Brina's take the shot. Like, Let's see you dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> Kari will take a shot too. Yeah, Brina's right. got one. Canary's got one. Moxie's got Jones a couple. Just like Moxie's making double do tricks. It. Oh, Thank and you. then I'll get I'll probably feed him some fish in the <laughs> Lexmora takes her shots and takes another or holds up the other and then looks at Brena. <sighs> and then you both cross arms yeah. and as you're crossing arms you take your shots Beautiful. and then slam them down I like a lady <sighs> that knows how to drink yeah the rest <laughs> of these people on the ship posers when it comes to drinking, how else are you supposed to quiet the mind for brilliance to happen? <laughs> Here is... well, I was always taught you had to sit in silence and then, you know, kind of just reflect on what, what you're trying to think about and, and how to get there. And... Why take the time of trying to quiet your mind when alcohol does that in 15 minutes? Oh, it doesn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> then you're not drinking enough, sweetie. She uh, <laughs> touches your touches your face a little bit. Oxy has a change of heart. Now it's a uh, monk of the drunken way. <laughs> After that, wise words. <laughs> Everyone's changing sunglasses tonight. <laughs> uh, do any of you want boots? <laughs> were, were they made for walking? Our... Yeah. <laughs> Walking on ship. I already got, I already got boots. These boots make it so that you don't fall on a ship, even if the boat goes, it goes this way, or this way. I mean, I but that's, there's two little good. pieces per boot. That's, that's just what, how you you stand right and then you don't fall. That's that's how that works. If I buy just one boot, would that be enough? Well. Usually, people who only got one leg buy that one boot. Uh huh, but I have two. Could I still just get one? Uh, yeah. And like I... flamingo it, and like Moxie's up on like one leg, balancing. Yeah. They didn't want to match their other boot, but. Well, can I just put it on? I mean, like, to be That'll honest. Be two gold pieces. Here's the boot. He takes Where? off the boot from his uh, foot. <laughs> Oh, no, thank you. No. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we were the same size. Short stack, go get him or her. <laughs> wow. <laughs> just misgendered you live. Wow. Um, go get Could he her... enchant your sandals? Or yeah, right? It, it only on works boots. on boots. It only works on boots. If I have the boots of elven kind, can you move the enchantment so it's boots of elven kind and then whatever this is? No. Okay. I'll I mean, I'm good boots. though, but thanks. I just was curious about the one. 
Short stack, go get her a clean, fresh pair. I don't need it. I don't. I don't need it. Well, I don't need a pair. I just want the one. I'll go. He hops off of his barrel and then starts waddling towards the. He doesn't really waddle. It's like, whoosh, 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 and then towards the stairs. I love him. Short Stack is probably the bravest person on the ship. If you do anything to ever hurt him, I will kill all of you. <laughs> okay, Short Rosa. For Ten years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. The same revenue. I mean... Kill everyone on the ship and then myself. Yes. Well, we'll see you at that meeting. Maybe dinner. If any of you want a uh, private tour later, let me know. She walks away gracefully. <laughs> and you see Cheddar's face look back at you, just scanning you all over. I wave at him. And she licks more and goes up top. Yeah, I, I'm really s sorry for her. She's... What can I say? She's horny. <laughs> <laughs> She's just a horny lesbian. My <laughs> sister. <laughs> I prefer men. Somehow that's one of the twin traits that we don't share. I ask Brina for another shot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess we know like two of them. I don't know what to tell you. Well, have either of you tried to? No. Mm -mm. I'm walking away. <laughs> <laughs> I did not remove, remove my fucking mouth. I feel like Moxie, who's like the tallest person in our group, looks over at like Umbrin and uh, Brexel and is just like. Oh, I don't think they're there. They're not there. We're not. No, we're still down below. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> We're just boys playing with guns. <laughs> but they are both it. short <laughs> kings. Yeah, yeah, so. but uh, Moxie <laughs> would crush them both, so. Just two guys playing with guns five feet away because they're not gay. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> guys being dudes. <laughs> just guys being dudes. All right. So a few minute, more minutes pass, and uh, you hear... The Dragonborn, who you had seen earlier, going throughout the ship. Meeting! Meeting! I think I need one more, and then maybe we should go. Yeah, I, I say... Just going through the ship, making sure everyone hears. Just fill both my cups up again. Yes. <laughs> Where you got the shot glasses, no one knows. I have brewer's <laughs> supplies. Oh yeah, you just have them, she said, I forgot. She, she has some, so... <laughs> That's what, like, plus Brain is a dwarf. That's just what we do. I can just make shot glasses. <laughs> yeah. You head up to Brain has got a rock and she chisels it. <laughs> <laughs> you head up to the top the deck. The finest dwarven craft. Mm -hmm. The rain has slowed down, gotten lighter, but still present. The uh, storm seems to have calmed down as well. Uh, it seems as though this, this Merid might have been having a local effect on the water. And you all head through the door that you appeared from and take a sharp left, enter the little table room with a long table with only six chairs. You all have to squeeze in with the crew that's already here, filling up this room, heavy breathing and short stack yells. And they, some of the crew starts to argue and it's... And it's kind of just like crazy and wild. They're they're really rowdy. But then as soon as Captain Barbarossa walks in, you hear her sharp heel on the floor of her boots. Well, it's not sharp. It's it's pretty blunt because that wouldn't make sense to be sharp on a pirate ship. And everyone stops and turns and looks at her. She looks at everyone in the room. Now I think that uh I think that we have some things to talk about. Now, if you can sit, sit. If you can stand, stand. And, uh, 
they all wait for you five to say. Mine Captain Barbarossa it. will go to the front of the table and then sit down. I will sit in the chair to the right of Captain Barbarossa. I'll sit next to Moxie. I'll sit across. Her yeah. expression is very steady. It's a calm expression. She doesn't seem to have s sternness in her face. She doesn't seem to have irritation or anything. She just seems to be calm there, but this this presence fills the room while she's in there. This aura of leadership that can command all of these wild, interesting people around you with just the sound of her heel on the ship's floor. And she pulls out a map. And she spreads the map out on the table. And on Albear, this is what you see. Ooh. Now, I don't know if I've introduced you all to everyone. And vice versa. So, like I said, I am Captain Barbarossa, and this is my ship. On my ship, we have trust in each one of us. No secrets to be hidden. No. No deceit amongst us. Trust and honesty is the very fiber of this ship. And so, nothing here is off limits to you. As we expect, nothing that comes from you is off limits to any of us. Of course, you are granted privacy in certain cases, but for the most part, get used to having people all up in your business. Now, a matter of what we're here to do. This map before you shows various locations in the Lost Seas. If you were to step out on deck, you wouldn't be able to see more than 300 feet before you hit a wall of fog. Then, after about another 300 or so feet, depending on the thickness of the fog, no vision whatsoever. As soon as you enter the Lost Seas, you are lost. And it is by the will of the gods of the ocean to carry us along. So we will continue our journey around here, hoping to find a way to each of these four main islands that you see on this map. Each of these islands contains a... a part of... a treasure called the Four Keys. You find the Four Keys, one on each of these islands, so legend says, and this will lead you to the treasure beyond the fog. A legendary treasure that can make us all richer than we could ever imagine. But there are many other ships in the sea. There are many monsters. And there are many other destinations that we might happen upon. So, we need to be ready. We need to restock anytime we find land. And we need to not go mad in the fogs. You might not see sunlight for days. Get used to it. None of us know how to send you back through the teleportation circle from once you came. Shortstack is not that to learn it yet, but eventually maybe he will be able to learn something to assist us with transportation. Shortstack. You got it, boss. Oh, he's researching. 
Wonderful. Now, let me give you a little bit of information on the islands. They don't have names, but they have general descriptions. One of the islands, this one that you see in the top left corner, is an island of rich bounty, prosperity once lived on by elves long ago. Now, their castles remain empty, barren, and somewhere amongst the ruins of the elven temple, are is one of the four keys. And then the lands below, that island, it's an island of three. That island has a more arid environments with two towers that look overhead, lights, houses that shine into the lost seas. Volcanic islands with some treasures below that we're not after, but you know, if we can snag a few extra if we so happen upon that land, why not? And then uh, some ritual places, some fortresses, in a small town, uh, a population of humans lives on this island. And somewhere among the islands is one of the four keys, just like the last one. In the upper right corner, you will see an island of many jungles and large spire mountains. Lots of rain, lots of beauty, but lots of danger. Now, this island used to be home to gnomes who made use of the jungle. And thus everything is gnome-sized. It's very inconvenient when you're there. But <laughs> they've made some very interesting technologies and magics inside. So that is something to be wary of. Then the last island is one created from dwarves. It may not seem as though it was once populated, but it did have a dwarven community below the mountains. And you might be able to find some ruins. And there is the last treasure of four. There are some other locations that we might happen upon. Uh, there is a small island owned by a wealthy man. He is told to be hospitable, but many people have disappeared on that island. I don't know if it is him or simply something about the island that is a risk that is posed to us, but I would not like to chance it, but only if we have to. Then we might also happen upon the tower that stands above the sea. You see only a, p a bit of this tower, and then below is a large Templar and court and various establishments underneath that have been long abandoned and it somehow keeps water out. Water doesn't flow in. It is an interesting place below. And then lastly the hub of scoundrels the area of thieves there is a floating city that if we do happen upon we will need to be careful but they have all of the supplies that we would need to ship back out i do have some connections there that i might be able to use but be wary if we are there because there are Thieves, gangs, criminals abound. It's a hub of the worst scum of the Lost Seas. But also they have the best food, so we like to 
Patek here and there. And that is actually the only place that you can go to repair a ship. So if a ship takes any damage from anything, that is our destination. So don't let the ship get damaged. You are here for our protection. That is why you have been sent. And we expect you to earn your keep in that regard. Now, are there any questions for me? Uh, what's our current heading? Which of the islands are we closest to? You won't know until you are there. We know approximately that if you travel a hundred or so miles, no, that's a hundred, fifty, fifty or so miles into the sea, you're bound to find something. So it might uh, take hours, it might take days. Is this map pretty, um, like, is, is the Elven Temple Island always north? of the, like, Island of Three down there? Yes, but the thing is, when you go into the fogs, the fogs turn you around and spit you out wherever they desire. There's something about these fogs that has a, almost a consciousness. <laughs> and, um, could you, one more time, just point to me which one was the Dwarven Runes? Island, I missed that. I was too. Uh, right. bottom, bottom right. Not the one with the crystals. Okay, not the one with the crystals. Got it. Thank but you. But the one with the just the mountains. Yeah. Uh, this one. Yeah, we do not want to end up where the crystals are. Now those are whirlpools. Once you get there, you cannot get back out. It is death. Oh, and there might be some ghost ships here and there. We have some things that we can do to uh, avoid them, such as pay the toll that they ask for as we pass through their waters. Captain, if I may ask, how long have you and your crew been out on the sea? Three years Spe now. We have not found in this region. Oh no! This this adventure is our current job that we have been asked to partake by the king. But we have been three years at sea before then. So you have not had an opportunity to explore any of these islands, have you? No. We did not want to chance it. We got into the fogs and we waited for our protection, you, to arrive. So you've also yet to run into any of the other ships on the scavenger hunt. We have had to pay the toll to some, uh, two ghost ships now. But it was no matter. I plans for it. Ghost ships do not concern me. Uh, oh, are... you're not afraid of ghosts? No. We're very well acquainted with ghosts. Uh, sure when we were sent in the, you know, guys of honesty between all, um, others of our Elk have been sent to the other ships also searching. Just a slight warning. There are other powerful mercenaries on other ships searching for these keys. I expected as much. This is confirmation of what I thought to be the case. But uh. I'm assuming that you all are capable of handling them. Because my ship attracts the the best of the best. Isn't that right, crew? Oi! They all yell in unison. Brina, like, you, you're in a very as, as, Brina <laughs> was totally, um, like, off her own world, and, and then she heard the yeah, and she was like, yeah! Not knowing <laughs> yeah, at all what in. was going on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Moxie kind of, uh, like, kicks uh, Kanari like, from the side. And coughs a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, you know when you're trying to get someone's attention, but not draw Your attention? Yeah, she actually, like, like uppercuts table. you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, um, I'll, like, hold, um, well, she wouldn't have kicked. She probably didn't try to kick that hard, but, like, there's a little, like, help. Yeah. Uh, Kanara will mind blink with, uh, Moxie. Oh, a 
Okay, cool. Thank goodness you got what I was trying to say. <laughs> this meeting is boring. Just kidding. That's not what I was going to say. Oh, um, my God. <laughs> Would it kill you to pay attention just once? Uh, I am paying attention. Um, <laughs> you let her in your mind. This is a mistake. <laughs> I can close it off whenever I want to. <laughs> but I have real important things because I was paying attention. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I didn't say you weren't paying attention. Well, uh, okay, I did say that. While you two are having this thing, uh, <laughs> Lady Barbarossa will uh, start discussing with the crew some of the changes, how they're going to adapt you. Uh, she hasn't really dismissed you all, but she's only talking mm -hmm. to a specific few crew members. And also, Lady Lixmora is uh, bending down, looking at Vrexel's armor. And without permission or anything, she's already broken out some Tinker's tools and started inspecting it. Uh, and so, her pipe in the side, her little... So tell, tell, tell me about these um, these uh, uh, firearm things and, and pulls one out of the pocket. Just like, please, anything to distract, but don't touch my stuff. Oh, I made those myself. So how, how exactly, I mean, how do you get, there's like some... some grooves in the barrel there, just providing some... I would go into every single detail for you. Okay? Okay. And yeah. I hope, expect you to take notes, because I will not repeat myself. Oh, that won't be a problem. <laughs> Keep in mind! Okay, anyway, <laughs> back to Kanari and Moxie. Um, okay, so, I was just thinking, we have those, uh, um, friendship agreements or whatever the hell they're called i don't remember um i only like half paid attention to all of that i figured it's you know the alliances would it. yeah those things and she's also doing this she's like pointing at umbrin like she's talking um because she <laughs> forgot <laughs> God. Don't want to mind. um so uh should we maybe like get a hold of them like i know sometimes you know you can like message um I send have all them those. Or the. Uh, I don't know. I Again, I wasn't paying attention, so I don't know if we have some special way to connect, or I have the bird thing that we could send, but should we figure out, like, what their boats are called, or, like, you know, I don't know, maybe get a little bit of information, like, if they've found any of the keys where they are on the islands? Since, like, you know, they can't tell us how to get to the islands. Also, I have an idea about that that we'll have to try out once we find one. Um. Okay. Uh, but, uh, I, like, wouldn't it probably be a good idea to know, like, have a general idea? Because we don't know, like, what if the ghost ships are our allies? Like, we don't want to actually attack them, right? I, okay, so Team Phoenix got in before us, and Team Empyrean was behind us. Uh -huh. So, I still need to check with Team Empyrean to see if they made it through the second level or not. Okay. Um, we can start with Phoenix, and then we can go to Empyrean after that. Empyrean, if they're in the kind of, um, the same space that we were before, um, in kind of the rest stop area, uh -huh. Yeah. time will be different, and they will there's going to be a delay with the message and response with them if they made it through yet yeah i mean i guess we could kind of tailor the message to let them know to just like let us know when they're here kind of thing yeah no i can do that um <laughs> excuse me right okay um i should let's i mean check. we can do that after this whole thing we can do that tonight before we go to bed I don't know. The whole thing with honesty with Barbarossa just makes me... I mean, honesty is the best policy, but... I don't know. We're kind of bound to them at this point, and what's theirs is ours, and ours is theirs, Look, and I don't really... What we're, you know, selectively lying about is no big deal. Did the assembly send us? Well, the assembly of the Dungeon Sphere sent us, so, you know, uh, we're here uh, on orders. And uh, what was some of the other stuff they asked? I don't remember. Uh, but, you know, I, I guess my point is that uh, 
you know, we're clearly cut out for the protection part, and we're just telling some half-truths. They didn't ask what assembly sent us. Really, it's on their, it's their problem. But also, if we're protecting them, you know, we're doing right. it. Yeah, yeah, let's check in with them. I'll check in with Team Phoenix and Team Empyrean when we're all together tonight. Yeah. Cool. I just wanted mm. to make sure I remembered that before I forgot again, because chances are uh, I'm going to get way drunker than I am right now, so... I think at that point, Kanari just kind of puts a hand on Moxie's shoulder and just kind of pats it. Um, just like, yep. Yeah. That whiskey was really good. Yeah. I so probably shouldn't drink all of that tonight. Drexel, was it? You're, you're muted. muted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a loud car. So, yes, uh, I'm Drexel Von Chomsky, Satanstein McPuffin. Nice to meet you. Oh, I'm Lady Lixmora. She just puts her hand out lazily. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> <Rex was like. laughs> I just enjoy I like the idea of Rex <laughs> not even touching her, but also just doing this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he does this too, and you guys go like this <laughs> yeah, together. Yeah, he just also. I am guessing that you're a genius like me, so I want to show you something. Come up okay. top. Okay. Sure. And she leaves the room, and apparently you could just leave. Barbarossa never doesn't say that things are done. Oh, okay. And just you just leave, and she'll explain yeah, that. If you that. if you bring that up, she'd be like, "Yes, we can leave. She, this is done. She doesn't dismiss us. We just go." She assumes Don't that. Don't need we to ask to bathroom. use the bathroom. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> she will take you up top, and the rain is actually pretty much gone now. And she says, I just have not shown this off to anyone that ha- couldn't appreciate it quite like I think you might be able to. Okay. All right. So, cheddar, kill. And then the what? red panda homunculus jumps down and its legs start to like grow a little bit and a cannon appears out of its mouth. (laughs) And then she points in the direction of the water and it fires a, this ballistic ball of force that shoots out and it just explodes in the distance. That, whoa, so how did it, I mean, the modular Nissa then like starts going into detail, like trying to get close to this thing without like touching it because it's probably still like, pss, you know. Cheddar protects, oh, and sorry. all of a sudden Cheddar uh, changes back into and then stands up as a like just a red panda and stands up on its hind legs, <laughs> but then its hands grow a little bit and it creates oh. a this uh, uh, burst of positive energy with. And every, both you and her will gain. Um. Ten temporary hit points. Hey. Actually, I, I no no those are gone from before so. And now Cheddar, bird, and then Cheddar uh, changes and then becomes this flamethrower like device. And she picks it up and blows fire up into the air. That, that is mightily impressive. Uh, I, I have to say in such a small, small device to have packed so much. I mean, I've got a lot of tools and tricks on mine, but uh, it's not exactly what you would call compact. Uh, if you... I want to share notes sometime. I can show you how to have some fun with that gun. I would be very interested. I, I, I've heard a little about how these operate, but I don't really know uh, best procedures. Um, I, I don't exactly have what you would call a steady hand, but... 
Well, honey, you've had 80 years to learn about guns. But... I mean... Let's... Let's go back inside. It's almost dinner time anyway. Sure, of course. And that's where we're gonna end it for today. I wanted to show off for Red Panda. Yeah. I want to make this character now so bad. <laughs> I love Shatters like, so much. Poor, poor Soren is currently disabled in the back of the. Just like, oh. <laughs> All right. Well. She's a battlesmith, yes? Yeah? Artillerist. Yeah, I was going to say artillerist. Oh, really? oh. Yeah, the cannon. I thought that was a skilled defender. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She. So I said it was a homunculus, but it's like sort of a homunculus that becomes this weapon that she can use. She can turn it into like a little cannon that she uses for for the ballista, the flamethrower, um, or she can that's awesome. create the, the protective energy. I mean, I want to play that character now. <laughs> <laughs> Screw that fairy. <laughs> yeah, I made the wrong kind of uh, artificer. <laughs> that's really cool. Yeah, so um, next week, we will see what happens. See if you land on an island. What I am going to do is I'm actually going to number each of the islands, and then I'll have you roll. See what oh, you nice. see what you get. There we go. Uh, do you want to roll right now to see where you go next, or do you want to wait till next week? I want to roll. <laughs> Roll. Does anyone else want to roll? Or, like, does anyone else want to, like, collectively have a roll be done? Yeah, that's fine. I don't care. Yeah. Okay, no. let me let me get the numbers, though. Gotta make sure. With my pirate dagger. <laughs> it's right. so hard being Umbran who knows nothing about boats and having to keep my mouth shut about boats and sailing and seas <laughs> and pirates. Okay. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So there are eight possible places that you might end up. So roll me a D8. Seven. Ooh. Ooh. So next episode, you will head to the billionaire's private island. Mm. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Most Very good. Game. Where people disappear, but he seems to be pretty hospitable. Uh, he does have a dragon flying over his island, and last there time is... we saw a dragon on a map, there was a dragon on the <laughs> yeah, map. Right? Yeah. There so... is a dragon flying over the island. I might pull it from Fizbin's. Ooh, new book. Oh, I need to move it. Um, so what I am going to do is basically, uh, where, what should I do? What should I use? What should I use? I wish there was like a, a ship little thing. Uh, we will, I will have a token for the boat next time. And then I will just move it between the ships to like where you're at. That's not, that's stupid. <laughs> I'm just gonna use a compass for now. And it'll be you, it'll be you. Oh. Surprised there's not a ship icon already. Okay. Buddy Kraken. All right, so you will end up at seven. And then if you roll a seven next time, you just re-roll. And then we will be good to go. So goodbye, whoever is watching and anyone in the future. And have a great evening. Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm.